Well, a very good uh, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Data Sim live stream. Today it's the 26th of February 2024, 34 minutes past 8 in the morning here in the United Kingdom, back in X Plane 12 in the Zebo Mod 737. We're taking a part in an event in Australia there, Infos Milt, Milt Run, which is uh, not every Monday, but uh, every few Mondays. They do this over in Australia, and uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to stream live. Well, I've got some leave at the moment till uh, the next weekend, uh, and I thought, you know what, I was only streaming eight hours ago. Let's, uh, after I've had some sleep, uh, do another stream. So here we are uh, in Darwin for the first ever time on a live stream. We'll be flying two hours, uh, 15 minutes eastbound to pronunciation check Khan or Can. No, someone said it's pronounced Can this morning on Discord, so can like a tin can please correct me if I'm wrong but uh, yes uh, let's see how we get on here today uh, yes I can see lots of comments regarding taking standard fuel what an interesting live stream we had yesterday so much so I had to cut off one sector update the video thumbnail and the video description uh, we got a little bit tight on fuel landed with about 35 40 minutes of fuel remaining um, but it was a really good opportunity to actually practice minimum fuel and uh, the Mayday fuel calls and how, how he'd use them in real life as well. Uh, and the one of the controllers actually commented on the video this morning, which I do need to get back to. Really um, great insight. He did say the first guy was struggling, I took over. I'm actually a real controller at the airport. And uh, he, he said if I'd actually made the minimum fuel call, um, I he would have accommodated that request as well, as I was a little bit less uh, wanting to on VATSIM because the poor original controller was overloaded. But anyway, uh, it was great to, to practice anyway. But uh, yeah, uh, as requested by you, I'm not flying Alpaca Airways. I did a quick poll yesterday because one of the members suggested that I'd fly Qantas, which is a beautiful livery, and I said, okay, well, I'll ask the you guys what you'd like me to fly. Do you want me to fly Alpaca Airways, or do you want to fly Qantas? And it was a uh, one in three only wanted Alpaca Airways, so we're actually flying Qantas today. We're Qantas 2403, uh, sorry, 2602, because it's the 26th of February. That's about, I've got the inspiration from that from. Uh, but yes, uh, look at all the Qantas aircraft here. In fact, I couldn't even see a single Alpaca. Oh no, there is an Alpaca. Alpaca Canada over there, but uh, oh, there's another one here, just push back too. But yeah, I thought why not go uh, Qantas today, so I'm going to struggle trying to run another call cool side yet again, but we are in Yan uh, Victor Hotel, uh, Victor Yankee Delta, there's an aircraft just taking off. Uh, I've downloaded Orpho for the entire sector, we are streaming live weather of course, but we are six hours behind live time because I downloaded Orpho for the entire sector and I wanted to enjoy the approach. Uh, anyway, who have we got here in chat? Says, uh, no alpacas, just kangaroos then. That's true, Steve Ebb. Hope you're doing well. Skittish says, good morning. Hope you're doing well as well. Papa justified. Just when I thought Monday morning and work was going to be a poo day <laughs> to stream. Great stuff. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Steve Ebb says, good morning. A big mug of tea and a uh, stream for yourself. A perfect way to start the week. Wonderful. Well, it gives the opportunity for some people who can't usually watch live to watch live, which is pretty good. Uh, Spitfire RF 100 says, lol. Hope you're doing well. Yes, can thank you very much uh, for everyone's <laughs> corrections on the pronunciation of our destination. Uh, Scotty Oz781 is here, Luke Zupan too, and uh, Softstar21 as well. Uh, someone at the start wished I was flying from Melbourne to Sydney. Uh, yes, I only went this way because of the spilt milk run. Uh, that's some event was flying between uh, Darwin and Cannes, so that's why we're, we're flying that sector today. Uh, anyway, let's uh, jump into the cockpit. It's completely cold and dark. I've not. Uh, done anything apart from load into the uh, stream and um, set up the aircraft in the iPad because I think it was the Qantas default setup. I've just sort of fiddled it to make sure it's similar to my operators. But uh, anyway, yeah, the full ATC <coughs> for the entire sector, which is pretty cool. We'll get the battery on. Uh, we need to get some ground power connected. So GPU is on the bus. You can see the uh, lighting is very dark in here. I've got this... Uh, fly of lure plug-in to improve the lighting but the these lights are way too dim they are definitely on bright aren't they uh, yeah that's that's on bright if you go to dim look you can barely see it these are bright lights that the lighting in this, this simulator is still it's a bit better with bright but that's way too dim still it, it, they need to improve that so battery on uh, GP on the bus electric hydraulic pumps are on landing gear lever is down we then check all the aircraft documentation and ship's library to make sure the aircraft fully serviceable, which it is. Um, so let's do the fault fire tests. We shall uh, do the fire test first down here. Squibs, master caution, overheat detector, which did illuminate. And we've got um, 
false navy detector in up. I mean, they look red. They should be amber. Um, <laughs> it's the fire warning. We will engine overheat lights and the warning bell lights. Fire warning is illuminated too. Perfect. We'll put that on here. Now, we are not going to take stock fuel today because I don't know how busy these vats of events get. I mean, um, can International Airport is slightly... Uh, it's a larger airport compared to the Santa Marta we flew into yesterday, so they could probably accommodate delays a little better. But uh, we'll just take an extra. Let's just take an extra 15 minutes of fuel. The reason is I might take. I would consider taking extra. But if you actually have a look at where our alternative is, our alternative we need an extra 4.2 tons. It's all the way over at uh, India Sierra Alpha, uh, which is an airport Qantas do fly into. I was looking at flight radar, but. I can't remember what it was called, but uh, we could perhaps use this alternate fuel to commit to can later if we need to. So, uh, I have downloaded the flight plan onto the mod, so I think I need to go to... Is it fuel weight and balance? There we are, load OFP. No, 183 passengers, that's the one, 10868, activate. 174 passengers, a little bit of cargo, zero fuel weight is 58.3. Just have to remind me to put a little bit more extra fuel on, so I'm just going to put an extra 15 minutes when that's done. So I'll put on 11.5, that will be our final fuel figure uh, once the refueling is complete, I'll add a little bit more. So there you are, the cleaners are on board now, cleaning what would a typical Aussie drink? There's lots of cans of Fosters, uh, all straight through the cabin. <laughs> Tough, only joking. Oh dear, oh dear. So that's started as loud as it ever is in the simulator. I don't know if there's a way of turning down all that banging and stuff like that. Well, that turns the entire aircraft noise down. Anyway, that, that is done. Uh, test the attend button, seatbelt sign we can't turn on because we've not started boarding yet. Flaps are up, which match the indicated position. Can't go fire test. Forward aft. Detector. No detector fault. Doors we know about and the fire warning light. You can barely see the fire warning light, the master caution light. Uh, perfect, that's all set up then. Lighting's all done. And okay, extension doors closed. Check the circuit breakers up here. Uh, Still warning test. That's all done. That's why it's not done. We need to wait a bit longer for it to work. Back speed warning test is done. IRS to nav. Alignment's going to take 30, 40, six minutes at this latitude. 30, Circuit breakers 20, are all in. And then 10. we can start the briefing. I've also got the interactive checklist working again in the sim. Uh, thank you very much, Michael Calder, for your donation, sir. Two FD2S streams in one day, <laughs> and one in Oz as well. An early birthday <laughs> present for me. You better nail the Aussie names. Winking face. Have a coffee on me. Thank you very much, Mr. Calder. Very generous of you. Eight uh, Australian dollars coming in from you. Yes, I mean, two streams in Australian time. I did one yesterday morning for you, which was evening for me, and I'm now doing one Monday morning, and it's Monday evening for you. So, yes, uh, it's uh, two streams for, for people around the world who perhaps wouldn't usually be able to watch stream live. Thank you very much for your very generous donation. Uh, as mentioned, we are st streaming... Oh, no, wait. I thought we were... What? Is it a, on a different time zone here in Darwin? Like, 30 minutes different from Zulu? Oh, that's interesting. I thought... Hold on. I thought I put the clock to. It's my OCD, isn't it? Oh, no, it's three twelve. No, why is that saying three twelve Zulu? Oh, oh, of course. There's a slight difference with. Okay, let me just change the time zone here, guys. Those are not my road pedals. Uh, so I'm just going to put zero eight. I just want to put this to zero two forty five. Interesting. I didn't realise the difference here. Minimums. Zero minimums. to minimums. approaching minimums. Forty-five. There we are. So that's now that's going to be about local time is different here. It's an extra thirty minutes. Yeah, thirty minutes behind. Lovely. Um, so zero two forty-five. That's for all intensive purposes. Uh, now uh, six hours behind live time. I was looking at that, thinking, oh, that's that's throwing me off here. So yeah, there's a. a Another 30 minutes added onto the time zone. Um, Yankee Fox, thanks for the 23 months, buddy. Hello, Captain. Just because I like the way Microsoft say it, says that. Uh, oh, uh, it doesn't say it, for, unfortunately, for these pings. It's only the the um, Super Chats and the other ones. For the membership members, it doesn't read it, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have enjoyed that. He says, anyway, off to work now, so have a great flight. Enjoying all the recent streams, as always. Thank you very much, buddy. And thanks for your 23 months as a member. Um, cool. Where did I get to? Did I do the cargo fire test? 
There we are. I think yeah, I did all that, didn't I? Overhead panel boom done. Right, let's now get... Yeah, Mount Issa, that's the alternate juice. So I, I did double check to see if it was suitable, but yeah, I did see Qantas are actually flying there right now, live time, so... Um, there we are. Yankee Fox, yeah, I forgot the men of these don't read. Oh, well. <laughs> Cheers, Luke. Thanks for the nine months, buddy. Nine months of learning and laughing. Have a great flight. Watch out for the... Uh, the ruse on takeoff. What's a ruse? Is that an Australian thing? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for your donation. Appreciate it. <laughs> a ruse. Oh, God, kangaroo. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Of course it is. <laughs> Sorry. My brain doesn't work quite right when I'm streaming. <laughs> ah, I knew it was a ruse, kangaroo. <laughs> right. Let me just get some weather. Uh, Atis is live. Turn up the volume mixer. I don't know why I can't hear anything. Oh, one two eight two five zero. One two eight two five zero. It's active. I'm not getting the eighties through on text, uh, so I don't know why that is. God, it's too dark in this mod. Darwin Terminal oh, hello. Delta. Expect instrument approach. Runway two nine. Wind three one zero degrees seven knots. Visibility greater than 10 kilometers. Cloud view 1,300 feet. Temperature 2 niner. QNH 1005. On first contact with Darwin ground or approach, notify receipt of information delta. Information delta copied. Time check 0846. Z oh, yeah, that is the actual time. Zulu right now, 0846. There's big gaps in the ATIS. I'm still listening to it, but it seems to talk between the, the frequencies. Message, and then a big gap between calling out the ATIS. But I've got it on text. Runway 293107, uh, 10k, few at 1329 degrees, QNH is 1005. There we are, so that's all done. Um, uh, who else we got here? Skittish, thank you very much for the six months as a member. I'll be coming back to watch the landing during my break. Enjoy the flight, Captain. Thank you very much, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for your continued support as a member. David said we should make him divert to there and make him pronounce it. No, I'm not even going to attempt that. <laughs> thank you very much. Right, um, it looks like boarding's complete. Uh, Q&H then off the uh, ATIS was 1005, which I'll set now. 1005. We'll put the MFRA to 1,000, 1,110 feet. And there we are. 1,110. Uh, we'll just turn up the lighting here. I don't know if it will help in the... Oh, cracky, what's going on? I'm super zooming in here. Mm, it's not... It's, it, but I mean, during the day, it shouldn't make any change, but this is... Way too dark. Right, uh, FMC, latest air rack installed. Uh, uh, what I'll do is put our positioning, I always forget the ICAO codes for all these airports, uh, around here. So let me just. Yankee Papadale to November for Darwin. Entire position, that's what we're doing now in the southern hemisphere. And we'll request the flight plan routing from A cars. Go for that. Fly Warner, thank you very 30, much for your £2. Twenty. <gasps> that work. Don't tell your bosses. Thank you. At work, between seeing patients, sneaky stream. Uh, thank you very much, Fly Warner, for your £2 donation. Very generous of you. Hope you're doing well. Don't let your seniors find out you're watching a stream whilst at work. <laughs> or your patients, for a matter of fact. Thank you very much for your continued support, madam. Appreciate it. Right, let's load the flight plan into the... FMC, Quads 2602, activate, execute. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to request our departure clearance. Now, David told me in Australia this morning, you don't tell them your ATIS when you're getting your clearance. So, let's tune Darwin Ground, 121.8, and see what is what. Darwin Ground, Golf Whiskey Alpha approaching, holding point Alpha 6 for runway 29. Stand was I on? I've got a stand number 8. Is that right? Did I choose 8 in the scene? Yeah, it is stand number 8. Is this a self maneuvering stand or a pushback one? Navigraph would suggest it's a self maneuvering stand, but this looks like pushback. Ready for Darwin Tagley. Ready for Takeoff Golf Whiskey Alpha. Alpha 
<gasps> Don't say that. Ready for departure. Amit Gupta says, can you explain how VNAV works? Have a look at my latest uh, Instagram reel. <laughs> That's my best explanation of VNAV. Or is that what you're referencing? Push back in Darwin being there. Thanks, Sydney MTB. Hi, Hasabas. I hope you're doing well. Good morning. Take care, Michael Calder. Thanks again for your donation. I have to catch up later. Spend time with the missus. Don't get in trouble on my behalf. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Sam Heater, have you recovered from last night's dear buddy? Yes. The files already reported, uh, and I've positioned to the other side of the planet. It's a long time ago issue. MHGF RXP enhancer, yes. Actually, that could be could be what's causing the issue. Let's have a look. Oh, look at the difference. It's worse without it. Look at that. Oh, it's broke. I broke it now. Hello, Captain. Hello. There, that's better. Totally worth it. Have Monday morning coffee on me. <laughs> Cheers, Yankee Pox. Thank you very much for the five pound who, once upon realizing that the membership ping doesn't read Microsoft Jane, is now very kindly donated to get the message across. Thank you very much, Yankee Fox. That's very kind of you. Loved hearing Microsoft Jane send the message. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee as well, buddy. Try lowering the contract. I've not played with these settings much. Uh, oh no, guys. Uh, okay, well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're off. You can't see the screens when it's off. That's default. It's a silly expect. Lamina think this is great. They think, oh, let's have the exposure thing. No, that should be the default lighting without having to look inside. I just hate it. I'll I'll leave it and just see how we get along the route. They are trying to get clearance. Yeah. Uh, ground, good uh, more. Uh, good evening. It's the uh, Qantas twenty six zero two stand eight departure clearance to Can, please. That's twenty six zero two. Darwin Ground, good day. You're cleared to Cairns via Rupeg Flight Plan 8. Runway 29, Rupeg 1, departure. Cargo and Centre Flanagan 180, Squawk 36, Correction 3764, departures 125, decimal 2. Minimums, minimums. Cleared to Cairns via Rupeg off runway 29, the Rupeg 1, departure. Climb Flight Level 180, Squawk 3764, after departure 125, decimal 2, Qantas 2602. Plus 2602. Perfect. I presume that's very back correct. Very good. Uh, so that's done. Uh, 180 here. Then. Uh, oh, I missed my alpaca. Um, I heard another alpaca there. So. 3, 7, 6, 4 is in the FMC. Uh, oh. 3, 7, 6, 4. Perfect. Um, don't forget the fuel. Yeah, thanks, Dukes, for reminding me. We're going to take a smidge extra. So 10.9. Remember, we're going to take 11.5. Just an extra 15 minutes plus all that extra alternate fuel, which we could potentially use to commit the weather forecast that I arrive. Actually, I haven't, I haven't actually looked at the weather at our destination. Very, very poor planning on my part. Something we'd never not do. Oh, it was actually... Taps for towering cumulus, but no CPs. Yes, yeah, so 15 minutes will be fine. So, uh, fuel 11.5. So, 11.5. Fuel. Call for the fuel truck. I think it does it instantly now. Yeah, 11.5. There we go. So, that's all in. Departures, runway 29. It's going to be the Rupeg 1. There we are. Execute. Just make sure there's no discontinuities or anything like that. So, that's going to take us. Oh yeah, runway 29, we're big one, isn't it, this way. So, Nasux. And then Rupeg, and then I just need to get rid of Delta. Get rid of Delta November. So I'm going to put after Rupeg, Director Sokar. There we are. And then Charlie Sierra is the arrival. This, ar this isn't the arrival we're going to really get. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, uh, so this is what Dave was telling me. So it, is, there is ILS available, but there's a database issue, so ILS doesn't appear for Darwin. 
So I'm just going to put localizer Zulu 105 via Charlie Sierra for now and then we'll tidy it up later. Now as a gross error check we'll do a ground distance check. Uh, 933 is the total ground distance. This says 967 is a lot more because I've got that full arrival in via Charlie Sierra outbound and going around that way. Um, we've got Hoo Hoo Chum or... Oh no, Hoo Hoo Chum just... Uh, your continued member, so thank you very much for the support, buddy. Really appreciate it. And um, hope you're keeping well. Pangolin, thank you as well for your 35 months as a member. I've been listening to last night's stream and enjoying the rising uh, note of panic as you wondered if you were landing on fumes or a rubber band. Brilliant. <laughs> there was no panic. It was all calm. <laughs> I only just logged off, uh, but the controller was uh, did a good job at the end. Um, perfect. So that's done uh, routing let's do this in performance so zero fuel weights in 58.3 a uh, significant amount of alternate fuel needed for our very distant alternate 4.2 tons uh, cost index 30 we're cruising at 35,000 feet today uh, top climb wind is 0 five three at 12 top climb ice uh, 14 degrees Transit altitude is 10,000 feet. I don't have much before. Well, I don't have any performance information. What's the runway length here? Oh, it's lovely long. 3,300 meters. We'll just go full 24k because it's quite hot and humid. Uh, Takeoff flap 5. CG 17.9 to so 6.25 units. Morning, Jordan. Hope you're doing well from Australia. Don't, I'm not flying Alpaca today, I'm afraid. Voted to fly Qantas. Uh, speeds are in 42, 43, 50. We'll set that on the MCP. There we are. Uh, your damper, nav transfer, display switch is normal, auto, fuel. We've actually got quite a bit in the centre tank, haven't we? Yeah, 3.7 tonnes. Going to be quite heavy for top takeoff. Cost be bright, dim, bright and off. Not that it's very bright in the, the lighting at the moment. Uh, Seatbelt sign can come on, fuel is complete. We would have had the APU up and running by now because it is 28 degrees and humid. Uh, so that's coming on. Window heat. That's all set. Four squadron trim air packs auto. Thirty-five thousand feet. What's the elevation of our destination? Sea level, isn't it? Zero. Cool. Um, I'm just going to select the SID, which is the Rupeg One. I don't have it pinned here. So the runway QDM for runway two nine. Let's have a look here, so you guys can see what we're doing as well. Is uh, two eight six. Unfortunately. I've got Reciprocal in there, that's what I was expecting this morning. 286. 286. And 286 on the courses. Flight direct is on. And the Rupeg departure. It's an RNAV SID. So it's uh, track on 286 to Nasux. Cross Nasux at above 4,000 feet. Which is coded just for track keeping. You can see how it's slow, slightly overshot that. So what I'm going to do at Limux is put 220 knots or below. Execute, and you can see, look, it's just straightened out that track just here. So, so that's uh, what we do on my operator. Any turns on the SID, which are first turn, certainly as a minimum, put 220 knots or below. Just helps with track keeping. And uh, there's also a restriction to be at or below 120 at Lemux, which is coded, but we have been cleared to 180, and that's a uh, back zip as well. We'll just confirm it's unrestricted climb after departure. We'll tune the, the VOR 126, which is Darwin's VOR. If we need to come back here quickly. There we are, so that's the SID all briefed and checked. Taxi routing, we're going to push back here, face east. It's going to be an Echo 2 cross to Echo 1, uh, left turn, full length for runway 29. So that is all hunky dory. Hope you bleed on as well. We'll disconnect the ground power. Uh, Auto brake to RTO, reset fuel flow, FMC legs. Trim I've set and the radio tuning panel set as well. Perfect, I think we've missed anything there. Uh, Bottos says, hello, why are you so early today? Yes, it's currently 9 o'clock in the morning here in the UK, but I give the opportunity to stream uh, in places where people who can't usually watch live can watch live. So in Australia, for example, we're in an Australian VATSIM event on the VATPAC uh, Spilt Milk Run Monday event, so people can take part and watch live. 
Mail Asian Aviators says, Hello, Captain. Just wondering how reliable are performance in flight tables in terms of calculating our takeoff speeds for intersection departures? If you've got accurate tables and charts, RTOW charts, then they'll be absolutely fine and you're applying them correctly. Uh, but uh, yeah, God, this cockpit lighting. I'm not. It's, it's gotten worse. I don't know if it's the. Uh, our exit of late. It's great at night now and dusk and dawn, but during the day, it's. Pff, look how bright and sunny it is. It's very dark here. Well, hello, big boy. Hope you, hope you do well. Right, let's get the better pushback connected. And then we'll run the checklist. Ground and cockpit. Tow is driving up. Excellent. Checklist then. Safety inspection before start checks. Safety inspection checklist. Surfaces and chocks. Checked. Maintenance status. Checked. Batteries. On. Electric hydraulic pumps. On. Landing gear lever. Down. Ship's library. Checked. Safety inspection checklist complete. Seems to have cut the checklist off. Before there. start checklist to the line. Bit missing off the IRS answer. mode selectors. Nav. Gear pins. Removed. Light test. Uh oh. Checked. Oxygen. Ah. Not the <laughs> Tested 100%. Your damage. Let's get it. Actually, make on. sure you do it. Nav transfer and display switches. Right. Normal and auto. Fuel. So, on our sector, we require a minimum of 10.9 tons. We've got 11.5. Checked. Fuel pump. Six on. Six pumps on. Cabin util IFE okay. down power. Okay, all doors on. and hatches Emergency are closed. Exit Ready to connect. On. Fasten belts. On. Window heat. On. Air conditioning. Pex auto bleeds on. Pressurization. So for it, 350 land out zero set. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Instruments. Cross checked. Auto brake. RTO. Hydraulics. Normal. Speed brake. Down D10. Parking brake. Set. Stab trim cutout switches. Normal. Wheel well fire warning. Checked. Radios, radar, and transponder. <laughs> Australian PM to see that Sam. Sit and stand by. Rudder and aileron we'll trim. See. Three and zero. Takeoff brief. Discussed. Discussed. PA. Oh, just, I'll be just like, good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to this Qantas 2602 flight to Can Joining me in the flight deck is uh, uh, Mick. Mick Dundee and um, uh, uh, Steve and what Australian knives do we have? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Flight time two hours, 15 minutes. Going eastbound over the desolate Australia. Just, yeah, PA complete. complete. <laughs> FMC CDU. <sighs> That's uh, set. Set. N1 and IAS books. N1 and IAS auto. V speed set. Mick. Stab that film. Set. Performance, weight and balance. <laughs> Checked. EFB. Call it off and stoked. <laughs> Phones. <laughs> off. Flight deck windows and cockpit door. Ding dang Closed. Did you read Doors. <laughs> Closed. Passengers. Seated. Before start checklist complete. Right. To the line. Let's get out of here. Uh, Quadras 2602 stand 8. Request push and start. Ground to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. Squamo Charlie, uh, Qantas 2602. That's very correct. That's exactly what we do at my operator as well. So out off before we get clearance. Andrea, any chance to have a checklist like this for Microsoft Flight Simulator? No, it's only available. Just Sorry, push start approved now. Uh, Qantas 2602, squawking mode Charlie. Ground to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. It's got to be facing east. Tow connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Before we do that. Start 923. Before start checklist below the line. Air conditioning packs. Off. Anti-collision light. Off. Parking brake. Sit. Transponder. Out off. Before start checklist complete. Excellent. Let's go. Starting pushback. And you may start engines. Thanks, madam. You've got lead captain tent Steve Irwin. Yes, legend. Of all the animals that ended up killing him, what was it? A stingray, wasn't it? Ah, oh, I used to. We used to watch him as kids. Anyone around the my age thirties? There we are on our way. The yeah, lighting out here is perfect. It's it's lovely outside. The external lollies look fantastic. It's super dark in here. Well, it's looking a little bit better now. But anyway, starting engine number two.
Hoo hoo, you're studying abroad in Exeter during the pandemic. My mental state was poor due to loneliness, but seeing poor Navigraph always been left alone on stream, I'm now feeling way better and finally a member. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Hoo Hoo Chum. I'm glad you're you're feeling better though, buddy. And two oil pressure in one, fuel on, check the spa valve. Sydney says, look to your left. Is that one of you there? Or everyone pushing there? Big old jumbo. Yeah, I'll start a cut out. One string engine number two, two, four, six, three. Two stable, starting engine number one. Is that the correct Qantas wingtip? Just red like that? Or maybe they don't have the wing. This is actually a stock Zebo livery. Wait, hold on. If I push, yes, I have pushed onto the edge line. All good, all good. Operation <laughs> complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. I just blame uh, GSX. <laughs> Fuel Good connecting tail. Stand by. Ah, don't don't look at this. What a lovely oh this silly Australian tug driver. What have what have they done? <laughs> oh no, they had the rule on the wingy. Yes, hoo hoo chum. No, you know, I can't use that emoji. That's only a special occasional use. <laughs> two, four, six, three. One, two, stable. Pro peanuts. <laughs> Go away, you lot. <laughs> You'd usually only do this after you've seen the pin. Flight controls. Good morning, everyone. Full forward, full back, full left, full right. Rudders. Full Tell right. Disconnected. Full and left. Has been removed. Hand signal Recall. left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. Oh, we will, madam. <laughs> Uh, uh, wish you'd have taken the IXEG board of the NG. Sorry, we'll fly the IXEG soon. The thing is, the IXEG, I like it, but it installs this uh, gizmo plugin that breaks other aircraft. So whenever I fly, I always uninstall Before it again. Generators on APU. Start switching. Thanks, uh, Brian. On anti ice. Off. Air conditioning. Picks auto bleeds on. Isolation valve. Cheers, MH. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for your support for becoming a member, buddy. Clips five required and selected. Green light. Stab trim. Set. Start levers. Idle detent. Flight controls. Checked. Recall. Checked. Before taxi checklist complete. Perfect. Qantas 2602, request taxi. That's 2602, taxi echo 2, hold short 29. Taxi echo hold short 29, Qantas 2602. So, there we are. Parking brake is released. Config, no take off config warning horn, and we'll uh, slightly position the aircraft to the left. <laughs> so uh, it's first right echo, and then holding short of runway two nine. Runway two nine, cool, it's going off quickly today. Welcome, MH. Uh, Diana, what rudder pedals are using the uh, Logitech? Oh, I forgot to completely mention. Look who's appeared overnight. <laughs> oh, he's tired. Had a long walk yesterday. There we go. So there's the right turn, and then echo here. Again, this is just stock scenery. I do have Ortho 4 XP installed for the entire sector. Sexta, Sexta. Hello from uh, West Australia, Ash Taylor. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for popping in. So I won't make a right and say ready for departure and try and do a uh, Belgrade special. <laughs> My goodness. Twenty-six zero two. Contact the tower. One three three decimal one. Have a safe flight. Uh, one three three decimal one. Thanks, ATC. Qantas twenty-six zero two. Bye. <coughs> Darwin Tower, good uh, evening. It's uh, Qantas 2602 holding at Echo 2. Uh, Qantas 2602, continue taxi across runway 29R uh, and Alpha to the holding point, runway 29R. 
make it across runway 29 and make a left turn holding short to runway 29 at Alpha, Qantas 2602. Perfect, so cleared to cross, strobes on. <clears throat> so whenever we cross an active runway, strobes on, we do a two-phase intercockpit call. So the captain would say confirm, read back, Jim would say, yep, cleared to cross, clear right, clear left, and then we enter the active. <laughs> I mean, quick, explain how VNAV works in great detail. Great de detail. Yeah, that uh, is scary. In great detail, I'd need about uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> in a quick detail, it follow follows the vertical profile program in your FMC. There we are. Taxi, cross echo and cross uh, Craig is welcome to the wet season, Captain. US, oh, Southerners, sorry, can't handle it up north at this time of year. I don't want to cause any, don't cause any controversy between all the different parts of Australia. Is there a, a sharp sort of, uh, you know, is there a lot of banter between North and South Australia? In Australia, I wouldn't know. Right, let's do the before takeoff checklist to the line. Before takeoff checklist to the line. Config. Check two dots. Flat. Flips five set really? green light. Getting worse. Stab trim. Set. Take off briefing. So we've got packs auto bleeds on V speed set for departure. 142, 143, 150 on the MCP. The departure is the Rupeg 1. Climb straight ahead of uh, runway 29 uh, to uh, Nasux and right turn to Ubgux, then Limux, stopping to climb at flight level 180 with an intersection climb at 120. Uh, NADP 2. And any problems, we'll climb straight ahead at the MSA. We'll just go 3,000 over the sea. So that is reviewed and holding on the cabin. What a sort of dinging sound. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Perfect. Cabin is reviewed. Cabin secured. Before takeoff checklist completed to the line. Perfect. <laughs> Love all faux textures. Close up. You guys look so bad there. <laughs> Sydney dog, it's a pole if you're wondering. Uh oh. Australia is divided roughly by football codes, rugby union via AFL. Okay, interesting. Uh, Neil, I'm weaker. Yeah. Huh? Uh, am I right in ensuring that there's no Discord? Yeah, easy. Brilliant. What on earth is what was people chatting about? Um, no, Dis I do have a Discord, but it's uh, sort of a, a non public one. Non public one. <clears throat> Western Australia is honestly its own country at this point, culture wise. Really? Oh, I don't want to cause any controversy here, upsetting people between left and right, north and south of Australia. Axel, what's your field of view? Um, 105, I think. Roger, it's an R23, over to departures, 125, that's one, two, see ya. There we are. <coughs> Qantas 2602, ready for departure. Uh, runway uh, 29 clear take off, Qantas 2602. Perfect, so all the throttle L nav strobes on. Weather radar and transponder TRA, cabin crew seats for departure and checks below the line. Before takeoff checklist below the line, MCP, set, transponder, TARA, strobe lights, on, landing lights. On. Before takeoff checklist complete. Excellent. Back at 260, Mike, reaching Alpha 6, ready for departure. Right then, we'll do a rolling takeoff. Uh, 260, Mike, behind the departing corner 73, line up for an 829. Timing. Behind. I'll cut the corner too Time much. Departing Qantas, line up and wait to an behind. Oh, I, can the barely see, I can barely see the PFD at ND, it's so dark. <laughs> right. <clears throat> It taxis nicely. Right, stabilised. Set takeoff thrust. 
Now looking for 95.9. Take off thrust set indications. Eighty knots. It checks reach for pressure. Up we go. Ooh, a bit sensitive. Stop rotating there for a second. There's the dead band. Pitch up. Nice. Positive read. Gears coming up. And trim. Nice. Dallas Tower, Volkswagen 18, Kicker 2, Volkswagen 1, 2, 9, holding. 400. Hello. Crash 8, 2, 9, 2, 9, 2, 9, 2, 9, 2, 9, 2, 9, Holding point two nine. What's here one eight? That never works anymore. Fuck up. Twenty six zero two. Over to the bar. Twenty five decimal two. Twenty five decimal two. Thanks to ATC. Twenty six zero two. Bye. Yeah, the flight director command bar should be lower now to to command an acceleration. Well, after I've bugged up. There we are. That's the attitude. It should do that a lot quicker. Speed check flaps one. <coughs> Departures, hello, it's Qantas 2602 on a Rupeg 1 departure, passing 2500 for flight level 180. Qantas 2602, departures, can I identify client flight level 180? Climb flight level 180, Qantas 2602. Just confirm that's unrestricted climb. Qantas 2602, FM unrestricted. Thank you, Qantas 2602. So the reason I asked that there is that 120 below on the SID, and that's very common in. in UK airspace, just 220 for the initial turn, uh, to get that clarification. I can barely see the PF at DNND, it's so dark now in the sim. Right, that's all in trim. <coughs> Command A, set standard. And VNAV 220 for the first turn, and it's unrestricted climb, so I can delete this restriction. But when you do that, you need to reinsert the speed, otherwise you'll, you'll lose that too for track keeping. Oops. Dogs dinner out of that. <coughs> Execute. So LNAV VNAV standard set passing 55 flight level 180 after takeoff checklist. So gears off, water brakes off. Oh look at the lighting in the sim. Is that that is dreadful. I'm sorry, uh, that is just awful. This is the middle of the day. Let me just I'm gonna have to turn that this off. I can't, that's un unusable. How long has this been sim out here for? Uh, I mean, that's better. It's better with it off. Oh, no, it's awful. <laughs> I can't see anything. That's default. What is going on? <laughs> Come on, explain. Uh, outside looks great, great, but that is awful. That is off. This is default X plane now. Oh, I can't. I cannot actually see the ND. If I go heads it that now, if it it's they need to turn off this ex exposure. This is absolutely awful. That is fine. Leave it like this. But that I cannot see a thing. I'm going to have to leave that on because even though it's darker, I can at least see the instruments. Oh my goodness. Right, uh, that is awful. <laughs> that colour! This is the middle of the day. Oh, crikey. I'm going to have to do it only fly at night. I have to take off checklist. Uh, air conditioning pressurisation 3.2. Well, I'll just I'll run this. Take off checklist. Air conditioning and pressurisation. There's a. I'm at uh, time to Brighty, but I want to make sure you guys can see what you need to see. Sit. Engine start switches. Off. Landing gear. Up and off. Auto brake. <laughs> off. Flaps. Up. No lights. Altimeters. So standard set passing 107 for flight level 180. VNAV. And we'll do the pre cruise checks now. We're just uh, going to hold at 220 until we outbound from Lemux. There we are. Uh, altimeters. Set. 
After takeoff, checklist complete. Perfect. So fuel, six pumps, lights coming off. Uh, APU is off. Pressurization 4.0 set. Never used to be this bad though, so I don't know what what's happened. Release the crew. Release the passengers. Recall. There we are. Pre-cruise checks complete. Outside, it looks fantastic. There we are, that's that final turn. So we can delete that speed restriction now. And it'll accelerate to our econ climb speed of 275 knots. Perfect. Mate, the uh, Aussie sun's got to you, says Sydney. Brilliant. Exposure, re yeah, this exposure realism. What's that for me? Uh, sorry, was that for the Qantas 2602? Hey, Qantas 2602, Centre 133 decimal 2, bye-bye. Uh, 133 decimal 2, thanks to ATC, Qantas 2602, bye. I can't see that frequency on X-Pilot. He said 133 decimal 2. And that's what I read back. But having a look here, I can't see that frequency at all, look. Is it 133 decimal 2? I can't see any controllers with that frequency. I'm always sort of looking at that whilst I'm streaming. I'll try it. Might be something that I can't see. Oh, there we are. I can hear someone talking. Maybe. Oh, interesting. Ah, I didn't know that, knowing Key and David. Sometimes I expand beyond frequencies as well in uh, v -Pi. I never knew that. I asked you to report a top of the set. Have to say 1082, re cleared direct to Oh dear. I feel the, like I need to be monitoring this frequency. Outside, the orfo looks very nice. Hey, Bye bye, Darwin. I don't know where we'll next see you. Oh, sorry. Cool, oh, blimey. Sorry about that. There is uh, Darwin down there. Uh, who is it I'm talking to? Is it Darwin Centre? Oh, I don't know because I can't see it on the list. Radar, very good evening. It's Qantas 2602, climbing flight level 1802 Baxib. Six, uh, apologies, Qantas 2602, sending a day, climb fly level 350. Climb fly level 350, Qantas 2602. 350 set. Once, twice, and uh, three times. Velocity 332. And monitoring 125. Velocity 332, sir. Currently, 29. Cool. Sorry to everyone who had headphones on there for extended. I can't see the instruments. <laughs> <laughs> the sim. But if they could just disable even the auto exposure's off now. Where's it's the sun in the sim? It's like directly above me. <coughs> Peak sub. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed that X Plane <coughs> 12.1 uh, comes out uh, sooner rather than later, especially if it fixes the um, lighting. Don't so forget, we're streaming about six hours behind live time. Otherwise, it would be. I probably should go. I mean, I could have a vote here. Do you want me to switch to live time, guys? Because then it would be a sunset flight. Because I, I'm really struggling with this. I can briefly go to the menu. It won't really affect the controller if I do it quickly. It shouldn't take long to load. If I go live time, it'll be approaching dusk sunset. Yeah, I think so, guys. Because this, honestly, I can barely see the instrumentation in light time at the moment. Um, right. Let's just make sure. I just don't want to make sure. Just want to make sure there's no traffic around me. Yeah. If I quickly do that, it will pause the sim. Right. right. Track done. Apply. There we go. That's live time now. Completely live. 
Uh, that's better. So it will be a night flight for the rest of the sector, but at least it's a bit more realistic. There we go. Well, it already looks much better. <coughs> Hi Alex, uh, Patterson talking of frequencies. Quick question, what does it mean when ATC says contact X on 0.95 or 0.30? Does it mean the same part of the frequency you're already... Now that's... You don't get that in Europe. That's very much a US thing. Well, do I say it's the controllers being lazy? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, for example, we've just taken off from Darwin. Okay, what was the ground frequency? One to one decimal eight, I think. So I press this. Can you get the frequencies on one of the charts? I think. So you can see here ground. Okay, so so what what's quite common is in the US. I've noticed, Sally. Some that similar is when you're VK, they just say Alpaca twenty six zero two contact ground point eight. Because the, the problem is there is also a, a delivery frequency with the same frequency. So if ground is the only 0.8 one, they tend to say 0.8. And now I can see the benefits of it. It reduces RT. You know what the frequency is, but I, you don't get that in Europe. Now in Europe, they uh, give you the full frequency. Now if I was in London airspace and I say yeah, contact London 0.8, they will come back to me straight away and tell me to read back the full frequency. They don't. They don't accept things like that. Is this if you're using the mod that might have broken the light, disable the plug in the toggle for time forward, backwards, and then back to the side time? That should fix it. Okay, it could have been that because I've never seen it as bad as it was there. But I, that mod does make it really good at night. Yeah, exactly. Will, as Will said, uh, you know, it's a, it's. Should I say being lazy? I, I I don't know. I think they're just trying to reduce our um, the free, you know the uh, cluster on the frequency. So I see, I do see where they do it. But it's something we don't do online. Same with this call sign. This if I was having this call sign on my operator, I'd say my operator's call sign. Then I'd say two six zero two as well. I wouldn't say twenty six zero two in the US all the time. In Europe, you don't hear that. But I I like saying. It's, 26 and, uh, it's easier to uh, hear as well. That's Brisbane Centre. Very good. As well, so we won't be able to enjoy Ortho for the rest of the sector, but uh, there we are. We are carrying southeast over this. What's this bay called? This large bay, I should say. It'll probably take us about an hour to cross it. There is our destination. Can. Yeah, he's got a, he's covering a large area, isn't he, this guy? But even with the panel lighting turned up here, it's not making any difference. Dome light doesn't do anything. Uh, Sydney, Brisbane Centre does actually cover about half of Australia's airspace. Wow. Yeah, I guess the airspace doesn't get as congested as certain parts like the US and Europe. So, I mean, Australia is such a huge country, isn't it? It covers such a massive area. I mean, what's the flight time from Perth to Sydney? You know, from, from west to east? Now, unfortunately, we get the mustard yellow clouds to the sunset. Uh, Looks like some sort of noxious gas. <laughs> About six hours now, okay. Well, four to five hours, depending on the wind. Yeah, it's such a huge country. Very sparsely populated. Oh, so maybe I should stop using the RTX. Oh, yeah, you can see that the lighting changing again as it gets darker. Uh, Jorge Garcia, have you got to fly the Max in real life? I, I have, yes. Sydney, every AT control except Melbourne and Sydney can sip the coffee and make jokes all day until the weather comes. That's why they uh, drink the coffee. <laughs> Brilliant. There we 
car, so just over ahead Snick, making a left turn to Rupeg, and then we join the airway from Rupeg to Sokar. Yeah, cloud colours need to what they do at sunset, they they go mustard yellow. It's like some sort of noxious gas. Brisbane also controls oceanic, about 11% of the world's airspace. Wow. Huge sensor then. But anyway, back to work uh, this weekend. Back to reality. All sims. Oh, I've actually got a flight on my roster. I'm flying next week. My second flight of 2024. <laughs> Just normal line flight. Yeah, I think there'll be some delays for my training to become an LTC because we're so busy in the sim, but they have given me a flight next week. To, I'll go to Poland. <laughs> Jacob uh, Wickfist says, any comments about the mods? Um, I mean, it's handling well at the moment. We're in the latest public version as well. 4.0, uh, 1.5. Um, yeah, seems all okay so far. Nothing has stuck out to me of being wrong, anyway. The pitch sensitivity is a lot higher, but I need to fiddle with the, the curves, and when it comes to that, I really don't know what I'm doing. Steve MX Plane seems like a permanent beta. <laughs> Let's see how the 12.1 update is. I think they're addressing a lot of the underlying issues, and I think those issues are all to do primarily with how it looks. And at night, which is our last x plane flight, it was busy. in the MD-11, it looked fantastic at night. So it's just a day, which is obviously when we want to enjoy the ortho and the, the views. Yeah, it's struggling. Where you, as you compare to Microsoft Flight Simulator yesterday, where it looked fantastic. Uh, Pete, thank you very much, buddy. 39 months as a member. I hope you're doing very well. Good morning, boss. How did it feel to be on the reviewing end of a classroom uh, session? Uh, oh, um, are you talking about when I with my line training training? I think is that what you're referring to, Pete? You have to double check. Receiving end. I meant. Oh, what a world about here, Pete. <laughs> uh, with my line training. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're always just pilots in training. But, uh, yeah. I think that's what you're referring to. I learned a lot, I learned a lot. Alex, uh, are you nervous for flying when it's been a while? Uh, not really. Um, I'm, I probably spend a bit more time preparing than I would if I was flying every day. Not to say I'm not prepared on a normal day, but I'll actually have a good look at the routing, you know, and the weather and the surrounding area just to sort of uh, you know, get back into the swing of things. I'll actually have a quick review of the normal procedures because when you get to instructing, you end up getting used to that role. There are certain threats associated with, with uh, not flying frequently and then instructing as well. Now, 45 days is the... Oh, look at the light go dark again. Um, 45 days in my operator. Now, if you don't fly for 45 days, you have to fly with a training captain on your next sector. And regulatory requirements require all pilots to do three takeoffs and landings in 90 days. And if you don't do that, you have to go in the sim for training. Um, so, yeah, it never usually gets up to that limit. But yeah, Pete, it was good. Yeah, the, the line training ground school I did uh, two weeks ago, started two weeks ago, was very educational. Um, having done the teaching and learning course coming at an SFI years ago, it meant the line training captain course wasn't... I knew what was coming, because the whole day was on the same sort of teaching and learning principles, so what makes a good instructor. CRM learning objectives. We all had to do a presentation on uh, a discussion topic, so my discussion topic was go around, so it was only a quick five minute presentation. All the, all the students, all the training caps had to do one as well. And then there was a, a written exam at the end. I got 96%, uh, which is not bad. When I say written exam, yeah, it's, it, no, it was multiple choice, but uh, you have to, a bit of form required. But uh, yeah, it was all, all good. Sydney says I might duck back to the crew rest area. Don't wake me up until the return sector. <laughs> Brilliant. Now right, approaching at 32,000 feet. Aircraft's climbing well. Performance is good. Steve said PMDG should have an update at the end of the week, uh, as well as a hopeful freeze fix for those who have been having those major 
Universal Flight Tablet update with new features apparently. That would be cool. Yeah, I have to say, obviously yesterday with the fuel issues we were having, that was the main topic and discussion point from yesterday, but the PMDG was, it handled quite nicely um, uh, and dealt with, it felt very realistic. You know, I do really like that add-on. Um, now there's one thing I wanted to look up which we didn't do yesterday, it was regarding the um, pump overheating. It is known that the electric hydraulic pumps will overheat when you get into a low fuel situation. I feel it came on a little bit too early. I'm just having a review of the overheat. The uh, FCOM. Uh, thanks for subscribing there. JBHIFI08. I hope you're doing well. Can you go on wrong? I did. I did get a question wrong. I knew why, why I did. Pass mark was 85%, uh, so it was all good. Bridge, Vegas, Taxi. Excuse me, guys. My microphone mute button doesn't work anymore. Um, so when I mute it, it's sort of... It is working. It's, it's very temperamental, so I, I muted it and tried to... I just took a big sniff in. <laughs> I did, so excuse me. He is busy on, on frequency, isn't he? If you remember to sign, it would have been 100% brilliant. This is 921, I'm just trying to find the reference regarding the low fuel. Ah, there we are. So minimum fuel for ground operation of an electric promoter hydraulic pump is 760 kilos. Now we were actually less than that, so I might actually take back what I said about the PMDG. So I was, I thought the overheat light came on too soon, but then it does say on the ground the minimum use of minimum amount of fuel needed is 760 kilos per side, but in flight it could be a bit less. I'll have a look at Bill Buffer's guide. Signed me button on the Boeing unit. That's actually a really good idea, Steve. I need to have a play with um, Streamlabs, or maybe a button on my. Actually, that's a fantastic idea. I need to assign the mute mic to a button on my Logitech keyboard. Uh, Patrick, that's exactly right. Fuel is used to cool down the electric hydraulic pumps. That's correct. Velocity 332, thanks to Simba, the star flight level 130. Yeah, I think... Ah, I just reloaded the... Oh, no. I think it's worse. Enhance exposure shadows. Turning... I think it's better without. There we go. It would be easier on the yoke, it would be steeper. I don't always use the yoke, so I've got, I'll show you my keyboard guys. Again, I'm not affiliated with Logitech in, in any way, but I do love this this keyboard. So I've got the, the um, wireless Logitech keyboard, and I've got these keys here, G1 to G5, so I could assign it to a button here, just mute mic. G1 buttons that work well. You're right down there, buddy. Oh, you got sleepy eyes. You got sleepy eyes. You got sleepy eyes, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, my baby. Yes. Oh, are you smiling? Are you smiling? You are smiling, aren't you? Jack. Jack. Where's, uh, where's your monkey? Go get your monkey. Where's your monkey? Where's your monkey? Oh, sorry. There's a. So my dog's boss. Get the monkey. Get your monkey. Go ahead. Get your monkey. Get it. Go on in. Arr. It's his favourite toy. Jack. Get it. Get it. Get it, monkey. Jack. <laughs> Go on in. Yeah, we get strange. Uh, good boy. Sit. Oh, I'm going to get another stretch. Fair enough. Jack. Sit. Sit down. 
Jack. Can you pour? 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 Good boy, thank you. And lay down then. Lay down. Ah, Sleepy, isn't he? He's sleepy. Come on then, on your bed. On your bed then. Come on. On your bed. Oh, it scared. <laughs> I see. He loves this little bed. So he's got his bed downstairs, but I have this little bed under the office. And if I'm ever in here streaming or pottering, he always just comes up here and just lays there. He's, he loves it. Four, seven, four, five. There we go. Four, cool. Seven, four, five, anyway, zero. reached top of climb. Sunset looks very nice. That looks good. That purple and deep orange yellow, that's that's normal. And we'll continue the rest of sector live time. Oh, you flight dog to sim, brilliant. Jack to oh, sim. <laughs> Uh, Wash Extreme said, I'd recommend turning global illumination off, it makes everything outside too dark. What was it called, sorry? Uh, global illumination off. Where's that? Oh yeah, I actually, it's made it slightly better, I agree. Oh, 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 no, ah, why? <laughs> I've got the table light on. So if, <laughs> that is ridiculous. Right, I can't even see the switches. Right, table light on, there should be like a, a flashlight in here. Left. That, that's dead, yeah, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> left zero, four, zero, jet star I think it might need to reload uh, the sim and stuff like that. But... Yeah, that's not good. Uh, JBF, what airline do you fly for? That's a very commonly asked question, fully understand the curiosity. Uh, something I don't wish to disclose. Uh, I have full approval to stream. I could even say if I wish to, who I work for, but uh, I personally choose not to. Thanks for understanding. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. But then I do. That looks great for a second, and then it goes... Yeah, I'll just... Now, I like these sort of blues and purples. That looks sort of yeah, nice. Oh, I don't know. Right, approaching SoCar. We'll do a fuel and time check here. About an hour and 30 minutes. Talk top of the set. Anyway, can I. Sh oh, guys, you know I like to have a bit of fun. I've, I've planned a little fun stream. Probably tomorrow evening. Let me show you this. Look what I hope to fly next. For a little fun flight. Any any guesses? I'll give you a clue. It's piston engined, very old, and it's a bit of a little fun flight. Let's see if anyone can guess it. And I'll, what else? It's a default Microsoft Flight Sim aircraft. John, the uh, that sounds really really clear. Yeah, uh, Fiat, Fiat, Fiat One, Tiger Moth. No, no, not as old as that. Actually, no, what? no actually, it could be as old as a Tiger. It's a very, f it's a very famous aircraft. Broke a world record. Nope. Single seater. No. Default, default Microsoft flights of aircraft. Not the Wright brothers. No. Oh yes, someone has got it. Washer Extreme, check it out. <laughs> That's what we're flying. Next stream, I hope. Bit of fun. There we go. Spirit St. Louis. Not going to fly across the Atlantic. <laughs> it's going to be over a body of water though. I'm probably going to get all set up. I'll oh, have to wait and see. Is your dog able to land the 737? Yeah, well, yeah, probably. He's very good. 
Oh, I forgot my fuel check. I think that might be David actually. Uh, so car, so yeah, we passed it about a minute ago. It's 29, should have been there at 27, so a little bit late. We should have burnt 2.4 tons at so car, and we burnt 2.15. So we saved a bit of fuel here nicely. Should have 8.5, we took an extra uh, 600 kilos, so about 9.1, we got 9.3. So we're saving a bit of fuel, tad late on the time, otherwise looking good. A couple of things we do at my operator when we reach the cruise level, we go here, select max continuous thrust, uh, FIR boundaries we'll put in as well. What on earth was that? That looks really good. Do you know what I wish Sims, both Microsoft and x did with regards to x and V-Lights? Make other aircraft in the Sim and the external view really loud. Like, really loud. Because they are really loud. Sort of feed this 747 levels and then allow us to control the volume as we wish. That would really increase the immersion, I feel. Um, what was I going to do? I can't remember what I was going to do. Oh, yes, FIR boundaries. Oh, I'd bear with me because I'm very unfamiliar with the airspace in this part of the world here. But to be fair, there are no FIR boundaries. It's all, it's all the same, isn't it? It's all Brisbane Centre. Oh, yeah, you can see how large this area is now. Flipping heck. Well, I'll well, we just have to keep monitoring the frequency for uh, Qantas 2602. Local duck pod, said Pangolin. Oh, wait, what, for my <laughs> Spirit St. Louis flight? No, it's large. It is a, we're flying over a lake, large body of water from, from south to north. Mark Mill says, if your dog flew it, maybe it would be a rough landing. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh dear. That was someone else. Yeah, Australia is huge. What a massive country. Well, we can't enjoy the ortho anymore. Okay, that looks great. That sort of lighting at dusk here is, is spot on. Put a, yeah, that is bad. That was a bad joke. Jack, <laughs> the dog. My dog doesn't fart. <laughs> no, he does. And when he does, you know. Who here has a dog and knows <laughs> when he's dropped one? <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, it's great fun to be streaming in here and actually seeing some different faces and some regular faces to the stream. But, uh, feel free, as ever, to ask questions. Increases my knowledge, especially on my time off. Flying time and life time now, so we'll be landing 11.26 Zulu. Just about an hour and... Actually, no, more than an hour and a half now. Actually, David, I don't know if you're still here in chat, could you remind me of the expected arrival in Darwin? Uh, not Darwin, can. There you go, you can see the aircraft going in the other direction towards Darwin. Got an alpaca directly behind us, Jetstar, Qantas, Qantas, it's all Qantas and Jetstars. Steve Dogs can clear a room, absolutely. Is that Jingle Collette? I don't know what that is, JKKES, what you're referring to. Pangolin is suffocation territory. <laughs> Dog owners know. Blind, I do. Airline captains have to know how to use light hooks. Uh, <laughs> I can answer that question. No, I know it's an operating system on a PC, but never use a Linux computer. Don't know why anyone would ever need to know flying an aircraft. But fair enough. Martin, start your line training next week. Any good advice to a good, to be a good line training cadet? Fantastic question, Martin. So, personally, best of luck with your line training. Uh, this is where the learning really starts. Um, now, your operator should provide very good guidance. You know, I'd hazard a, a guess you might be a colleague of mine, thanks for respecting my privacy. But um, whatever airline you're working for, have a look at the approved uh, training notes. So my operator, they have very good guidance, specific guidance for both sim training and line training. If there's any specific guidance for line training, please look at that carefully. Um, and the way I always 
prepare for a flight, I always, like, I'll show you guys, it's on my notice board, and I've had this post-it for 10 years, and it's not changed. Can I show you this? Yes, I can. It's very specific to my operator, but there's nothing that's going to give everything away. So here, here I have a post-it note, which let, is on my notice board, and every time I fly, I step through these steps. I, can you guys see this? I don't know if you can. So, so first thing, it's an app we have called the EFL, so I'll check the weather, the NOTAMs, the route geographically, so we're flying from A to B, the en route alternates, uh, any potential places we could divert to. Check the aircraft status as well, so we can remotely see the tech log, see if there's any defects or MEL items. It, it's not always 100% up to date, the master documents, the tech log, but it can give you a rough idea if, if there's things that could impact your operation. So, for example, if your aircraft's Cat 1 only, you're expecting low visibility at your destination, you might be able to liaise with ops to get an aircraft change to a Cat 3 aircraft, explain the situation. Uh, and then look at all the charts for the expected routing, SID star, ILS approaches. Our airline cr produces a document called the Airfield Brief, which is a fantastic document. So these are specific uh, guidance on, on threats associated with the airport, what you can expect, shortcuts, etc, etc. Uh, also the AD section of the chart. Uh, it's a good information as well. And then I preload the APT with as much information as I can. And then I go to work. So that's what I do. Um, your pre-flight briefing before you start jumping into the fly deck. Use that time to discuss with the LTC what you'd like to do for the day. And you have your discussion items at some point too. But anyway, best of luck with your online training. <coughs> I have 80 plus 10, yeah. Dogs will clear out the room but still have the most innocent face ever, absolutely. You missed coffee off that list, that is true. Maverick, you bought a 4080. Oh, very nice. That's a chunky graphics card, isn't it? I'm quite happy with my 3080. Seems to be dealing with 2K just fine. Uh, Pedroco, with regards to on route alternates, how do you prepare your flights? Do you have specific ones your company recommends? Do you identify one every hour of flight time? Very good question. Now, there's no specific guidance for on route alternates except they need to be within an hour's flight time, and the on route alternates don't appear on the flight plan. Um, they they can be used to lower your contingency fuel. But it's usually all done auto on an automatic basis. Now, let's say I'm flying from the UK to Spain. So I know, or, or, or our ops manual states, if you need to divert en route, you obviously check the weather and suitability for no TAMs, but the preference is to fly into a base. So if our airline has a base, they're great, because that means if we divert, we have the facilities. If we don't have, if it's a base en route, we then try to fly into a destination. So where do we actually fly into? Uh, on the network, okay. If it's not a base, if it's not a destination, which our airline usually covers quite a large spread of Europe, uh, isn't uh, isn't usually an issue. But then we go to a uh, convenient large airport. Now, if we have a medical emergency, we'd again apply apply the same criteria: is it a base? Do we fly into a destination? But if none of them are available, we'd then fly into a reasonably large airport. So Heathrow would be unacceptable, or maybe uh, Charles de Gaulle. That is busy and big, and, and you know it, it's going to be a lot of disruptive. But for example, maybe uh, one where we have the facilities to, to help deal with the situation. But uh, really, there is no right or wrong way. It's carefully check the on route, weather and no terms. If I'm on a long flight, I every hour just have a look. But if it's you know cav okay, you don't need to get the weather and, and on route. Isn't it? On route, so I'll turn it. Lovely random slinging. Uh, Pedrigo also asked if you have a pressurisation event that would require immediate descent landing, would you know where to divert or would you need to go through the process of decision making with your FO? Yeah, you would use decision making process. Now, with a rapid depressurisation, the priority is number one for flight crew. This is get your oxygen mask on uh, so you don't go unconscious. And number two, uh, it is descending the aircraft to 10,000 feet or the uh, MSA or minimum moral route altitude, whichever is higher. Once we've done that, the aircraft is depressurised and safe. We then reassess the situation, looking at fuel time available, 
and then yeah, we would utilise the decision making process to do that. We wouldn't just go, right, 10 mile final, there, that, boom, done, because next thing you know the airport's ILS is out or it's unsuitable, so yeah. A decision making process would be good. Yeah, guys, I do apologise for the sniff, I need to assign ability to mute the mic. Um, because my button I use on my headset's broken, so I again I apologise. Apologise, I didn't use it. Sniff really loudly, and I think you all heard it. So, sorry. I should be doing this during a stream. I'm just going to have a quick look at the mic settings. See if there's a quick mute mic here in Streamlabs. Hotkeys. Uh, reduce speed, mark to small, uh, 76. Oh, got a ding dong. Alpaca 260 mic, contact center 125. 260 mic. I've got someone telling me to contact them, and I've also got AC here waiting for him to come in. Did he call me, guys? Did I miss it? on this controller. Quadus 2602, we just uh, got to contact me on 125 decimal 7, do you want me to transfer? Quadus 2062, thanks, 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 Jets are 233. Jets are 233, recleared direct to Agubi, India Gulf, uniform Victor, India. Jets are 233. Modus 2602, sending it out, maintain flight level 350. Maintain flight level 350, Quantus 2602. Perfect. Uh, Stephen, did you read about this from a powerful jet stream this week? A commercial aircraft going from New York to Lisbon reached a ground speed of 835 miles an hour as it caught a lift in the strong winds. I did hear it's been there's been very strong winds uh, from west to east uh, over the Atlantic this year. There's been some uh, record-breaking ground speeds uh, accomplished. I think some like 250 knot jet streams and things like that. The, the highest I've been in my flight is 190, 200 knots. I've hit about 560, well no, just for sure I have 600, 600 knots, nothing like that, it's some speed. <laughs> What's going on here? Two three one seven thanks. It'll be a rough heading uh, two eight five from your present position. Right, so we'll jump again to get on there right now. Right now, two seven. Right, he's a long way from home. Ten eight nine one anyone heavy taking contact. United one ninety one. So say again. Uh, Pangoni said, "What? How often do uh, medical emergencies happen? Also, unusual things United like passengers needing a rest. Uh, good question." Um, I've had one medical emergency, well no, I've had a couple of medical emergencies, I've not had to do a pan medical call, pan medical, if you have to on, do an en route diversion, and that's usually only for the most serious situations. Now the good news is, the majority of flights usually have a doctor or nurse on board, 
and if at any point they advise the cabin crew that we need to get this person on the ground as soon as possible, we do a pan call or a medical, so we divert straight away, no ifs, no buts. If it's life threatening, so heart attacks, strokes, uh, anything where they need medical attention immediately. I have had medical emergencies, I wouldn't use the term emergency, where they have well, we have been advised by a doctor or nurse, look, they, they need a hospital, but it's not life-threatening. So, depend, there's no right or wrong way about it, would you divert, depends on the advice. Uh, now, if there's no medical or nurse on board, the cabin crew can make that judgement as well. We can also contact a discrete frequency and get advice from a medical uh, professional. But, um, yeah, I've, I've had to do it once, get an ambulance on arrival, maybe half a dozen times. So, yeah, good question. Boy, hello. You okay? Hello. Good boy. Out after. Yeah, some lining around in the sim. Again, the weather radar is unusable. Might as well not have one, really. Uh, Matthew Schmidt, why does the higher min min manoeuvre speed and more limiting amber eyebrows not disappear when turning off wing anti-ice as opposed to turning off engine anti-ice? That's a really good question. So engine anti-ice and icing on the engine cowling isn't really going to impact your ability to generate lift from a wing. Now, wing anti-ice, if we use it, we're having to remove ice and... <laughs> That's the best way to describe this. Boeing's logic is, if you had to use Weng NTIs at any point during the flight, what it'll do, it'll set the stall warning logic for icing conditions. So it's a little bit more conservative. So it affects the stick shaker. So I think it's the PLIs will move and the minimum maneuver speed bars as well. Um, and if you have to fly certain approaches at flat 15, you add an addition to the VREF as well, 10 knots not impacted by flat 30 or 40 but yeah on single engine approaches or anytime you use flat 15 it will say you know if you've used wing anti-ice or if the landing temperature is below 10 degrees with icing conditions you, you, you fly something called VRFI so we add 10 knots to the approach speed so yeah the, the logic is just to be more conservative uh, in case ice builds up on the wing even though it shouldn't with the use of wing anti-ice but the logic will, will change if you use it on turn on wing anti-ice it'll stay on until after you've landed the the, uh, the uh, store warning uh, logic for, for ice and conditions. That's my best sort of description I think. <coughs> Blind Eye says could you watch with us the security briefing video called the honest pre-flight safety demonstration video that airlines are afraid to show you. Uh, I don't know if there's any mods here. Yeah, I can have a look at that. I've just realised, and thankfully no one's asked yet, I've not up updated Nightbot <laughs> for this stream. But if you want to watch that video together, then I'll give you my opinion. That's do that. Did I update it? Oh no, I did update it. Oh no, I didn't. Let me just copy the routing. I've updated the aircraft, but not the route. This is our 821, apologies. Descend now, fly level 330. Uh, 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 just updating Nightbot, guys. Give me two seconds. We've still got routing based off our sector of the Caribbean last night. Go. Flight time two hours fifteen. Not that everyone always uses the commands, but uh, if they do, I'll we'll be all up to date. Baron two five, thanks for that. Re cleared direct Agubi, India. Actually, stand by. Perfect. That's that done. Um. Baron two five. Uh, <laughs> Someone just noted the fuel in the. Uh, Tanks, uh, yeah, centre, yeah, 800 kilos. It was tight yesterday, but it was good to just to see it for you. Anyway, look, the lighting now at night is fine. This looks really good. Right, let's have a look at this video, blind eye. I'm 
Hunter, what's it called? It sounds like a bit of a sensationalist video, honest. Honest pre flight safety. How long is it? Six minutes. I found it. The honest pre-flight safety demonstration video that airlines are afraid to show you. Let's have a look here then. God, what's going on below me? It's a lot lighter. Right, let me just uh, set this up here. Just confirm you're turning right, direct to the Gooby, please. Let's have a listen to this then. Just turn off Spotify. Listen out for our call sign as well. Greetings from the cockpit, this is your captain speaking. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the two million dollar safety video that an ad agency did for us. <laughs> But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. The FAA says that 60% of you ignore the safety talk. Today, you'll hear the real safety talk you should have been giving years ago. You don't want to miss this one. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. Is it just so stats? If this plane is going down, concentrate, because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen in the first three minutes and last eight minutes of the flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are the ones facing backward like the ones the flight crew are seated in. No, that's not a coincidence. The next safest seats are over the wings, closest to the emergency exit. If you're not in one of those right now, that's a bummer. But here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where the nearest exit is. Now count the rows between hey, you all good and stuff. that exit. If the cabin friendly, is full man. of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, about how would you don't get bring your to bags. the exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing just that. Now, look at your seatbelt. I know you all know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's common for people in emergency stress situations to try to open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So basically, that it's just way. talking about... There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970. feel like a roller coaster drop, and it's going to scare the... Look, and goes at the end of the day, uh, I see the point there, and it's giving you some good tips and whatnot, but the safety demonstration does and should be listened to every flight, even if you've already seen it before. And I always say that in my boarding PA, please listen to the safety demonstration, uh, because they are giving guidance. Now, things that aren't mentioned, which you should never do, please, in the event of an evacuation, don't bring your bags, because it genuinely snarls everything up and slows everything down. It's so important that your bags are, are left behind. Uh, you know, no one's going to take it. it, it'll be reclaimed no, no, afterwards, no, no, but it, seven, it no. does cost lives in situations where you need to get off the aircraft quickly to fires or, you know, right, thick, two, dense smoke. Seven, seven. So that's the most important thing. If I could um, get you to take anything away yeah, in the incredibly on, unlikely uh, situation that you have to evacuate an aircraft, now, that you do leave your bags behind. That's it. Um, that. Anyway, let's have a look here in chat. Matt is currently doing your 800 type rating CPT coming from ATR. The logic is quite different. Ah, this is why you're asking the questions. Yes. The, um, yeah, any, any turboprops, uh, quite a different beast to, to um, the NG. But best of luck with the rest of your, your course. We'll have a lot of ATR-8 guys coming coming through at our operator. Um, yeah, some CBs around. Yeah, there is, but it, it, you can't detect it on the weather radar. I mean, this is just a unusable. But there is on-route CBs, I think, on the uh, flight plan. This is really dark as well. Oh yeah, yeah, lovely. Isolated bedded CBs up to 52,000 feet. Fantastic. So how do I actually probably check them out there? 15 minutes of fuel might not be sufficient for that sort of disruption. But the destination isn't uh, forecasting anything like that. 
Five cop out for report your mark number, please. Uh, Simon Singh, so I think. find incredible uh, that the A350 evacuation had Five either accident went smoothly. Ah, oh, yeah, I mean. I, now, remind me, guys, you know this better. I think for regular ship requirements, doesn't an, an aircraft need to be evacuated? Is it 90 seconds with half, half of the emergency exit doors unavailable? 90 seconds? I can't remember what the exact record of approval is. So yeah, I think they did. Uh, I think they did an overall good job, but over. Yeah, I mean there was a runway incursion. I think in the boat still hasn't been fully reported. Anyway, yeah, I was looking about five minutes ago how to mute the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit bugged up. Uh, turn left heading 080, expect uh, tracking via Andob. I mean, I can always do this. That, it's a little scroll thing. How do I actually turn it off with a button? Sign that to a button, that would be great. Delta A21, just report your mark number, please. Ah, there's a helpful YouTube video. Delta A21, report your mark number, please. Quick streamer tip. Oh, uh, I don't four. watch this. Delta A21. Now. Delta A21, thanks. Reduce decimal 77. Hot keys. I'm just, uh, you know, practicing. How do you search for hot keys? Oh, I, don't, I need to do it. I need to do this when I'm not streaming. <laughs> Half a little later. 1884, thanks. Reduce decimal 78 for me. Decimal 78, honestly. Perfect. So, there is traffic just, uh, just above us, actually. Uh, we are. Uh, 2789 up. Just behind us, look. Uh, turn left, heading 240. There he is, look, can you see? There's us. Jetstar 930, report your mark. There's traffic just 2,000 feet above us. I wish it was the same level of volume, you know. Jetstar 930, thanks. You were going a lot slower about a minute ago. Uh, reduce decimal 76, left heading 180, please. Oh, Ross, I live with a read on, does at least not look like a bet tradition anymore. Graduated uh, to a modern art look, yes. I mean, looking at this on route, whether we'd be diverging around this at this altitude, but then, you know, it's just a, a blob. <laughs> it's, I just ignore it. So. Uh, Wash Extreme says, How realistic is the night lighting explained regarding not seeing clouds? Yeah, I mean, if it's pitch black, you can't see clouds. Any moon will illuminate the clouds very well. But uh, I don't think there is any. Is there a full moon or a any moon out for the moment? Oops, I'm just on the speed break. No, so here it would be very dark, so this sort of would be, I mean I think this is meant to be some sort of cloud, so you wouldn't see this. It would be pitch black, you wouldn't be able to see the horizon. Flying water, travelling to the States with a friend, me a paramedic, and she was a Dr. Pasture, literally collapsed in front of us, thankfully just a faint. We were given a bottle of wine for assisting. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Johan Jacob, why does Vats and Matey ask you a Mach number and not ground speed? Ground speed should be more accurate. So they know your ground speed. AT controllers can see your ground speed, but they need to make sure everyone is flying the same speed or assigned speed, and that's the speed the airplane is flying through the sky. Do you know who am I? Said, how about doing. I'm going to SIM assessment now. I have question. Do you know what is CP CSPD document? The document which is showing climb gradients. Now we have a chart in the table, or a table in our manual showing climb gradients and rates climb based off those climb gradients, but never need to use them. 
Hello to all 4x4, yeah, he said, hi Captain, he was just watching your Santa Marta stream and just realised you're live. Ah yes, we're here, live in Australia. One hour from Darwin inbound to uh, Cannes as we speak, about uh, almost halfway in the sector. Uh, Dr. JD123, there's actually a full moon, I think, or nearly full. I'm in north east, north Oh, what's NSW again? North, south. Uh, new south, new south. Oh, I can't remember. New south Wales. Very good, Steve. Live and with fuel. Fantastic. Plenty <laughs> of gas. Just our 251 Around with uh, five tons. CPDLC is not modelled yet, is it, in the mod? I think that's just potentially there, but I don't think there's any, uh, I don't think there's any, uh, CPDLC here. Oh, this centre is streaming at the moment. Twitch TV. Joshua, am I cool? This guy, this, this controller's got, uh, Twitch. See if he's. Oh, he is live. This so this controller is on Twitch right now. I don't have a Twitch. I'm having to watch a very long advert. Oh, cool! Look at this, guys. So this this person's actually streaming right now. No, oh, because I've shut that window, I have to reopen another one in Chrome. find the chrome window I've just opened. Baron two five, just confirm maintain flight level four three zero. Uh, apologies, uh, four three zero. It's stuck on the honest pre flight safety demonstration chrome window, but I've closed that and it really won't recognise it. But anyway this guy is streaming on Twitch. New South Wales, thank you. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Johan says, why I ask is not everyone is on the same weather variable, some might have different upper winds than others. Now, a fat sim I think does require the use of live weather on, so should, everyone should have the same wind weather, and I have to say both Exponent and Microsoft Flight Simulator are quite good at plugging in the different winds. Now also, another thing, you see we've got this large blob here, you can actually sort of see that in the sim, so you'd be asking to avoid this weather. Yeah, that you would not want to fly into. Let's see what happens at the sim, I'm curious, but yeah, weather avoidance would be required there. I'd want to be turning upwind to left visually, you can see it's clear. Yeah, we are looking cards and explain anyway. Josh is one of the directors at VatPack, does a fantastic job. Yeah, I'm trying to share the, the stream. Let me just try and open Chrome one more time. <sighs> Come on, man. Every time I... If you, if you open Chrome in a new window and close it, Streamlabs doesn't update the Chrome overlay, it only gets stuck on the one you had open. Unless you select a new source. I'll, I'll do that. Jetstar 821, contact center 120, decimal 15, expect star clearance. Right, 120. Right, 120. Oh, even that it won't let me open a new window. Jetstar 251, thanks for your help. Right, add a new source. Window capture, add source. Add a new source. Chrome new. Add source. Oh, I can't get it to. 
I can't Break, get it. Uh, contact 1832, So if you're interested for Twitchers, the ATC controller who's talking to us is streaming right now. Share my whole screen. There we go. So this is the guy streaming. Brisbane Centre. Go check him out on Twitch. Josh Joshua Mikkel. <laughs> Joshua Mikalef. But I don't I don't Twitch. So uh, Where are we on there? Can you see us? Fucking for the speed of sound, what? I can see Alpaca. There we are, look, there we are. That's us here. Alpaca 2602. Make a queue here. That's cool, isn't it? These how much these controllers can see. I don't know if there's a bit of a lag between the stream here. I've got this music in the moment. Streaming him, streaming you, who's streaming you. <laughs> oh, cool. Anyway, I'm about to go through this cloud. Ooh, there is the moon. Just rising in the sim. Oh my days. That should illuminate all the clouds. Anyway, we're about to go through this massive CB, um, which would uh, potentially disrupt the aircraft. Let's see what happens. Craig says, ever consider Twitch? I know some do both at the same time. Yeah, I know you can stream on both simultaneously, but I'm quite happy just doing it just on YouTube. And don't have the time to manage that and like the social media pages and things like that. Very busy on frequency. Anyway, about halfway through the sector. <laughs> we might die. <laughs> Let's see. I think we'll be alright. But yeah, if you're at 35,000 feet and you've got a CP higher than you and that, you don't go anywhere near it. 20 miles around it at least. And ideally upwind of it. Too bad. <laughs> you would never want to see that also in the flight deck. Yeah, neither X Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator has ever truly depicted weather. And unfortunately, within the confines of a desktop simulator, with everyone running different simulators, different add ons. Weather avoidance can't really be accommodated because if I requested to go around this weather, someone else probably would go straight for it. Whereas obviously in real life, yeah, everyone's avoiding the same weather. But as predicted, I didn't expect it to be a real issue in the scene. And if, if you see lightning illuminating the flight down like that, you're too close. <laughs> Oh, what on earth was that? <laughs> I just saw one of the engines spike up over it. What? What? What was that over here? I saw a master caution over heat detector or fuel scent bumps. It's an ominous cloud. What was that EGT spike I saw? And an engine over here. Uh, that wasn't a good sign. There's a little bit of turbulence though. Yeah, uh, engine anti ice we wouldn't need, it's minus 45. At least it's bumpy in the cloud, that's quite good. 
I moody, it's a bug with the Zebo. EGT spikes when the fuel in the centre tank is zero. Yes, that's not realistic. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up on that, Moody. Never seen that before. Wing view to, I think we're out of it now, but yeah, it does do she bump up and down a bit. Why is that red? Both, both have like a really bright red, red light. Is that just the issue with the lighting in the sim? Should be red. Left should be red, right should be green, but it shouldn't illuminate red up like that. Well, at least it lies at the flight deck so you can see everything. That should be off now. But night lighting's great, looks really good in the sim. There's the moon. <laughs> oh, look at my dog. My dog's gone to sleep in it. It's such a weird position. Is this normal? <laughs> it's like... Oh, I think he's awake now. Is that a car be comfortable? <laughs> it's all like bent round funny. Uh, center, uh, 25, uh, That's it. And 25. Apologies, I should have uh, thought higher. Can I uh, request a uh, block between yeah. 480 and 430? Yeah, that doesn't look comfortable. Well, he's in it. <laughs> he's not forced to go in that position. Ooh, spooky. Is that a super moon? Look how big it is. It's not very big. To be fair, it does look a bit bigger when he's low. Well, there we are. Box one, turn left, heading 080. Blind eyes in positions every year, your procession and <laughs> jealous with brilliant. Oh, Lee Cole, mine must be a Labrador thing, mine does the exact same. Yeah, he, he does. You, you sometimes look at him and he's like, that can't be comfortable. Buddy. But he gets in that position himself. He's not moved since I've <laughs> showed him there. Uh, Lucas Staples says, uh, what's that? Uh, do you prefer the Microsoft Flight 7 PMD G73 or the Zebo? Ah, it's horses, of course. It's, you know, both have their pros and cons. Zebo, I prefer the handling of. Uh, but the sim has, well, right now, dreadful lighting. Uh, the PMD G has probably slightly better systems modeling, all the different systems, but all aircraft handle the same in the sim on, of that size on takeoff and landing. So, you know, I think overall, what provides the most immersive experience? I think Microsoft Flight Sim does with GSX, the graphics, how it looks. Uh, whereas x -Plane, it is, again, just as good in respect to the, the, the handling, but the graphics aren't as good. And you, you do need to download all for the stock scenery as well. Doesn't really good. So yeah, both, both enjoy abusing and will do moving forward. James MP referencing Star Wars. Is that on my soundboard, I wonder? It's not there, unfortunately. I've got lots of Star Wars on here, though. Perfect, top descent, 11, so a little over 30 minutes, we'll start setting up at about 10 minutes into CAN. Back to this helicopter, the question, I know about 10,000 feet you have sterile cockpit, but do you still have banter and stuff with the other pilot? Because I only check this and call that's coming out of your mouth. Uh, fantastic question there, Magnus. So yeah, sterile cockpit at my operator is from pushback to top of climb. 
And after top of climb, yes, you're free to discuss whatever you wish. And from top of descent till on stand is also sterile cockpit. So sterile cockpit means any conversation or discussion is purely in relation to the flight. Uh, as needed. Uh, for an LTC, you know, you do a bit more instruction as well, so you can sort of talk about landing, but that is also about the flight as well. Otherwise, you can't, you have to wait till the cruise. Good question. Cadet Vida 2 says, any tips for interviews? I've managed to get into the panel, uh, into the final round for an ATC trainee position in Prague, past the aptitude test and everything. Best of luck, Cadet, and well done for getting as far as you have done already. It's achievement in itself. Um, just be yourself. If you do not know the answer to a question, don't try and BS your way out of it. So, so for example, in my interview for uh, Thierry, they asked me about the course for becoming a training captain, and I hadn't really looked at that because I was preparing for a Thierry interview. And they asked me, talk me through the LTC process so when you become a training captain, what, what you're going to have to do to prepare. And I said, I, no, I put my hands up straight away. I said, I'll tell you what, no, I actually looked at that. I said, I know I've got to do ground school sim and line training, but I couldn't tell you how many sim sessions I need to, how many sectors. Don't know. I said, oh, okay. And then they explained to me in the interview the process. And the key thing is here, well, for an instructor point of view, it's slightly different. They don't want someone who's going to, let's imagine a, uh, someone asked me a question on the line. I can't, you can't feather dust it. You, you, if you don't know, you don't know. You just have to say, look, let's look that up together. Or, or the best way of doing it is, and you say them well where, what manual would you find there to get them to look it up so it doesn't look like you don't know <laughs> but you've got to put your, your hand up and uh, you know if they ask you a question you just don't know the answer you know to a point you can't just go I don't know I don't know I don't know you do need to know what you need to know but uh, don't try and uh, pretend or, or fluff your answer that's the key thing otherwise be yourself um, yeah, be confident. Uh, I remember my interview at my operator. I uh, walked in, and this was back in 2011, and I tripped over. They had an extension cable uh, going into the projector, uh, and I tripped over it. And I just said to the interviewer, I said, Do you mind if I just walk in again? <laughs> and they, they, were, they loved it. They were laughing their heads off. Um, yeah, it was completely unintentional. <laughs> I just genuinely, genuinely tripped over this cable. And uh, I just went, do you mind if I uh, do that a bit again? Uh, yeah, but it was very laid back, the interview. I remember I've had several interviews in my project. I've had one to obviously join the airline, uh, one to become an SFI, one to become a captain, one to become a training captain, one to become a TRE, and you just be yourself. Captain, you have to get the Concorde Lego, it's brilliant, but enormous. I've uh, not got that one. I still have, and I bought it like two, three years ago, the Apollo 11 Lego to build. But I need to clear up some space on my shelf. I'll show you, look, you want some sh you want a shelf cam? I'll show you this, guys. So obviously, yoke cam is hiding above. Shelf cam! Ooh, what do I have up there? I have a 911 GT3 RS. My Oh, look, I won an award shooting. There you are, okay, first place in my category in, in autumn. I've got a clock which my uncle made, a bottle of beer which is uh, a present, it's got a label on it, uh, a wooden propeller, and uh, also above that, you can see it in between the bottle of beer and the uh, and the clock, there is uh, some pistons. I won first place go-karting with a bunch of colleagues. Uh, where is it there? I won't look any further because it shows you where I went go-karting, but uh, I came first place. Keep that there. So I'm thinking of selling that on eBay and uh, getting rid of that because it doesn't quite fit on the shelf anyway. And by the way, I've got a Lego crane set which I've got years ago. Getting rid of both those, but I don't have the original boxes, and then building the Apollo 11 rocket so I can fit the entire shelf. So that, that's what I'd like to do. I have got the time to. Well, I have had the time to do it, I've just got a lot of other things going on. Golf Whiskey Alpha, left heading 070, expect uh, clearance by hand up. Left heading 070, expect clearance by hand up, Golf Whiskey Alpha. Perfect. Stephen says, need a Darth Vader breathing sound if the pressurisation is wrong. I've got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got when he falls off the... No! <laughs> oh, 
idea. Lego stream would be awesome. How long would it take me to build Apollo 11? Should I cross the Atlantic and build Apollo 11 on Yonkam? <laughs> oh dear. Gulf Whiskey down for contact centre on 120 decimal 15. Uh, flying time, yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day, you never know. Good luck with your account training whenever it is. Perfect. So, we're cruising on really nicely. Live time, live weather, inbound to Gulop. This is over this large body of water. Does this have a name? Any Australian people in chat? Between Dumav and Gulop. We're almost halfway through. And then we'll be starting our descent shortly into Cannes. Uh, Dahina says, I'm flying my first lesson in a couple of weeks in a PA28, so I have two hours booked. And would you recommend doing both hours on the same day or separate days? Oh, it really depends. Uh, I'd, I'd speak to your instructor. Um, if the weather's nice, maybe get both flights done. Uh, but just enjoy the experience. That's all I could really advise. Yeah, build it for the 100,000 substream whilst on a long flight. That would be cool. But maybe I could give it away as a gift. Sign it. <laughs> Chris uh, got my wife the Lego Concord and she had it done in about four hours. Wow, that's good going. I, yeah, Concord, four hours at Mach 2, you run out of fuel. But I'm waiting for Colomata to update it based off our last flight, which was complete pandemonium about a couple of months ago. It's the Gulf of Carp Carpentaria. Gulf of something, I'll go with that, Will. <laughs> Tom, you'd like me to fly between Bangkok and London. Ah, yes, Bangkok is your your uh, home city, isn't it? I have streamed that before, but not for a long time. Not for a long time. Cadet, as Thierry, do you get cadets from just your UK base or also from other European subsidiaries? Uh, good question. Well, I'm not a Thierry yet, guys. I'm, I've, I'm not even a training captain. I need to do both courses, so I'm just currently a TRI. But as TRI or in a sim, any instructor, uh, we train all over. Uh, different, uh, you know, from different nationalities, different... Let's say, yes, there's other options available within the company. We'll be training all of them. Jacob, three serious questions, no answers. Jacob, what were your three serious questions? Let me look up here. If I miss them in chat. So you said any comments about the mods? Uh, the mods handling very, very nicely, and um, there isn't anything that's really stood out yet. The main thing was that spike in the EGT, which was associated with a bug in the sensor tank. That was the main thing there. What else did you ask? Uh, can you say something about which knobs have backlight line? My thoughts is that only a few have that. What do you mean by that, Jake? Backlit line? Are you talking about the lighting in the flight deck? That is accurately modeled. So you've got the background lighting, the flight uh, order flight director system for lighting as well. They're the only ones with backlight. And then the other one. Oh no, it was a different Jacobs there, but I did miss his question. John Jacobs, you said. Uh, why does Vance Amazing ask your map? Oh no, I did answer that one. Good. So, so I do apologise, Jacob. Sometimes, you know, I do my best to respond to everything here. Uh, some do just sometimes go past me. Oh, I just crossing Cape York, which is a lovely 4x4 location. Very cool. Tom, well, I was uh, born there, but uh, over the years I moved down to Hua Hin where the beaches are very nice. Beach Plus, what a champion of streamer. Doesn't get upset such comments. Ah, no need. Uh, but rather humbly goes to look at the questions, Mr. This is why, one of the best streams. Ah, yes, there's no need to ever get uh, upset or have angst. Uh, you might get the odd sarcastic reply from now and, then, uh, now and again, but uh, <laughs> that's all. I do my best. Or, 
I die every time I travel, it's very funny to explain why I always carry a multi tool and a set of basic tools. Oof, how do you get that through security? Uh, repair the table in a real Tunis aircraft. It was a 600. Sweet Dio, ah, I think you missed my message earlier. Was that on? Yeah, probably did. Ah, you're, you're the tower controller in a, 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 a can. Very good, very good. What a snazzy. What approach can we expect now, actually? Now, I, I know David B told me this about twice, but I've already sort of neglected to note down what we can expect. Because the flight plan, which is a suggested routing on the Vatsim event page, was to route via Charlie Sierra, which is just on the extended centre line of runway 15, which is, well, no, it's actually not on the extended centre line, it's to the east of the extended centre line. But that's where the flight plan's taking us. What was the star we can expect? Did I actually end up selecting that? No, I didn't. I put the Charlie Sierra transition. We'll have to see what we get later. But if any of you know, I'd appreciate the update. I mean, David did tell me, just for to note it down. Cadet, what are your thoughts on the open fan design, such as CFM Rise? What's that? I've not heard of that. Oh, wow! Wasn't that a concept back in the sort of 80s and 90s? <laughs> Imagine having that on a 380. Look at this. I've never heard of this, but I've seen this concept before in an original design, but weren't they really loud? And it meant to be more efficient than turbofan. Thanks, David. That's brilliant. Really appreciate that. Uh, so rivals. I'll put like Zulu a Cody star. So we got we got several Codys. Uh, star Cody. We've got a Cody eight Alpha, Cody eight X ray, and a Cody eight Zulu. And they're pretty much all identical. Just seeing where we're rooting in from. So we're coming in, we want the Punnet transition. So Punnet. Should we hazard a guess which Cody arrival it'll be? Should we go with Cody 8 Alpha? And the Punnet transition. And we don't want Charlie Sierra. Well, let's have a look at the RMP approach transition we have. RMP Zulu. Several gun row, maybe gun row. Thanks, David. Ah, has it? Ah, was a good guess. Good guess. Into three right, so we just need to get rid of Charlie Sierra now, which is fine. So pun it direct to Cody. That's going to uh, be for ATA, 50 minutes, top percent 200 miles. Cool. So the FMC, I'm pretty happy it's all loaded. Um, yeah, we'll try this localizer Zulu with the ILS. So, this, so David is explaining to one of the members here. Um, in reality, here there is an ILS approach. We've got ILS Zulu or ILS X-ray, um, but there's a Navigra Navigraph database error. It doesn't allow you to select the ILS. Now, looking at the ILS charts, the fact we selected localizer in the FMC, let's see if the points match. So, we've got gun row, centre fix, the centre fix should be at 10 miles. Charlie uh, Sierra. Uh, Yeah, so lock 11 point just outside of 10 miles. Then we have Caster. So these points are coded, so we can either... What we'll do, we'll plan for the localizer, but if the glide pass is available, we'll arm approach and we'll just update the minimums from 790 to 400, plus, plus 40, so 830 we'll have set to 400, if the ILS works. But Dave was sort of... A, you were telling me earlier that approach doesn't work either, so approach should work. It's not, it shouldn't be effect whatever's it, you can have it, the FMC blank, as long as an external glide path approach will not work. So we'll have to see what happens. Anyway, FMC's loaded, so we'll wait until we're a little closer until we set up another 10 minutes or so. 
Cadet is a picture published by the French Ministry of Transportation or something like that showing an Airbus concept with the open fan design rumoured to be the upcoming 320 replacement, really. But I remember, let's see if we can find the video, well, not that I can share, well it's not working properly here, there was like an open fan on an MD-11 or something, MD-80? It's quite a well-known video. Yeah, here it is. Unducted fan, but it wasn't incredibly loud. Have a look at this. Well, that's slightly different, I guess. So this is a different concept, isn't it? Military, yeah, it wasn't even alive. Cool. So that is, yeah, this is a very different concept. So that's backwards. This is actually in the front. Now, oh, be interesting to see if it's uh, built. Uh, Jamlin, hello. Have you heard about the ATC spoofing on LL flights? What would you do to mitigate ATC VHF spoofing? I have, and we actually spoke about this on Discord last week. So, have you guys seen, due to ongoing conflicts in Ukraine uh, and Russia, there's a lot of GPS spoofing going on in that part of the world. Um, so, what GPS spoofing is military activity is blocking GPS signals and it's affecting commercial aircraft. So GPS moving has been an issue, it's more an apparent issue now. Uh, when I say it's an apparent issue, it is a real issue. So we have actually got updated guidance channel on how to deal with it because what it does, obviously the aircraft is using GPS to update its position primarily. So if there's an issue with the GPS, it can update the position or incorrectly show the the wrong position of the aircraft and that could cause terrain warnings because if it shifts you towards terrain doesn't know your height either it'll give you terrain warning so if lots of videos if you look online of gps spoofing of ngs airbus ac20s and other aircraft getting false terrain warnings they're in the cruiser 38,000 feet and it's just constantly going terrain terrain pull up terrain terrain pull up and it's obviously incorrect now previously our guidance was whenever we get a terrain warning we must do the terrain escape maneuver but obviously in this situation you know, you're not going to do it. So, so they've updated our guidance, which says, look, if you're above the MSA, um, your VMC, and your flight path is confirmed to be clear of terrain obstacles, we can disregard spurious warnings so long as we're within an area specified as having reported or observed GPS spoofing. Now, we can't do that if, if, if there's no area at this. We have to apply the terrain escape manoeuvre seriously. Uh, if you get a terrain warning, uh, because it could be a terrain issue. Now, if we're at or below the MSA, we always apply the QRH manoeuvre for any terrain warning, spurious or not. Okay, so we have to apply it. The only main guidance that change that could impact is if we're on the approach, flying in an area observed or reported to have GPS spoofing, it's daytime VMC, and positive visual verification can be made, we can continue the approach. So that's the main main guidance that has changed. We can we can disregard and continue. So yeah, it is an issue at the moment. Uh, who's blocking the signal? Who knows? It could be west east um, <laughs> people. So people are just blocking it. So yeah, interesting. Jamlin, I meant ATC spoofing. Where ATC instructions on turn to headings to deviate from course. Ah, oh, sorry. Ah, so. So yeah, VHF spoofing got you. I was for, I thought you were referring to GNSS spoofing. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it, it, it'd be quite obvious to try and just confirm it. Now, if you had a, a clearance or given a heading, you'd read that back. Or certainly, I'd be calling up on the stretch frequency one to one decimal five. There's ways of getting around that. I got you. I got you. My apologies. And now, yeah, I mean. If someone calls up the radio and it's fake, you can usually tell you straight away recognise the controller change. But uh, just confirm it via CPDLC or something like that. Europe is managed for CPDLC pretty much for the most of 
Westville, 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 how large of an area is GPS spoofing affected? Uh, it's quite a significant portion, I'll find the map. But yeah, VHF, if, if any, it doesn't matter if, it, obviously what happens to other LL, it happens to other aircraft, you have people pretending to be ATC, it's usually quite obvious. Trying to find the EAS. Uh, EAS released a map showing all the areas. Uh, where is it? Here we go. These are the areas being affected by GPS spoofing at the moment. There we go. So we've got um, Eastern Poland, Latvia, uh, and then sort of Cairo, area north of Cairo, all of Turkey. These are the areas where it's been reported here. It's, it's this is actually a poster released by us. Uh, <laughs> What's with all the jabby dodgers? <laughs> yeah, that's become an issue. Uh, Long Tom Jaws says, is there traffic up ahead? Or what are those flashing lights in the distance? Yep, there's traffic. See the port, starboard lights, the beacon lights as well. If I go to the flyby view, no, he's already quite far ahead of us. Got a 450 contact centre on 120, that's 15, expect start clearance. Uh, Eros, does the clock still work normally with GPS spoofing? Nope, you'll see that go blank as well. So yeah, we actually have mitigation processes, so, you know, if we're in an area which has been observed reporting, we can actually disable the aircraft up position updating as well via GPS. So it's... with the page. Nav data, is it the nav, do, nav options, pause. Just left, heading 080, expect clearance by Andor. Left heading 080, request fire no dock at uh, 923. Set to that page. Velocity 478, you on frequency? I think it's in the nav options, but I don't know if this is one correctly. So this is different to ours. There we are. So I found it. Uh, nav options here. You can actually turn GPS updating off. So if we're in an area where spoofing has been reported or observed, we go to this page, we actually turn off GPS updating. And the aircraft can still update its position using lock, VOR, DME as well. Uh, and I think it uses IRS, but you can't obviously disable that option as well. Um, so yeah, that, that is another mitigation factor too. Yep, Cadet, that's usually the sign of GPS spoofing the clock go. It's based off the time's based off um, GPS. Very good questions. But yet to experience myself. Now that illumination of the clouds from the full moon is spot on. That's exactly what you see at night. Looks really good. That's that's really good. Right, so let's start setting up for the approach. We'll give um, control to Jim, our illustrious first officer, and um, we'll start putting all the information in here. So 250 below 10,000 feet, execute forecast. Love the fact I can fetch the winds from the flight plan. Do you have a Do you have encountered a spoot for your heart? No. Load the winds. Excellent. We can execute that. We'll just get the Q and H in. Uh, can uh, Q and H is one double o eight twenty nine degrees. Fixed rings have already put in for runway one five ten for thirty five thousand feet. So top of sits around one hundred and five miles from Can. Off 
weird weather right now. Uh, so we, we're sort of expecting uh, this arrival, co some sort of Cody arrival. We've gone for the Cody 8 Alpha via put it. So there's put it after Andy, so afterwards we're going to be routing direct to the start of the arrival. So there's Punnett, and it's going to be a slight right turn from Punnett to us direct to Cody. That's it. That's it. So holding a gun roof is busy. If we lose ATC, there's contingency procedures via Punnett, just from Punnett. 076 to Cody. 076 to Cody. All coded and correct, so happy with that. So we're going to plan for the ILS X-ray. Oh, sorry, ILS Zulu. But we're going to use the localizer only, just in case you ha we have issues with the glide path. Because localizer is the only option in the FMC. So 1099 is the localizer and ILS frequency. Uh, 1308 for the VOR. Uh, course is a 150. Oh, is he, was he contacting me? Sorry, Quad is 2602, heading 080 degrees. Jetstar 920, contacts at a 133. Thanks, thanks guys. Uh, there we are. So 150 is the courses. Not used to Quad's course on. Excuses. Quad is 926, contacts at a 133, that's 1-2. Good day. 150. So frequency's course is minimum as then. So we're going to plan for the localizer. But if the ILS works, we can simply arm approach, switch the uh, minima to uh, 400. Yeah, 470, 400. Let's do the approach climbing gradient. So this requires a higher missed approach climbing gradient. It's fine. So we'll set 830 feet for the minimum. So there'll be some sort of spacing vector. Increase the distance between us and the traffic ahead. QNH expecting is 1008. Uh, Larry, thanks, 16 months as a member. Uh, insomniac greetings from Idaho, USA. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Thank you very much for your continued support as a member. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Excuse my. Wait, wait, wait there. Uh, excellent. So, uh, vectors uh, all via gun rope onto the localizer only approach. We'll plan for that if it's the RLS available arm approach, switch the minimum. So, DME is required or GNSS, we have both. Uh, DME is required if you're doing the lock only. Uh, high terrain, west of runway 1533. Okay, you can see the MSA, yep, 6,500 to the south, 5,200 to the west. Bear that in mind if we lose radar control. Um, coverage west of the centre line for the localizer. Max 180 knots from a thousand feet. Uh, aircraft may be vectored onto the approach. No circling approved to the west of the airfield. We're not planning a circle today. So localizer only then. So we'll get vectors. Uh, the final approach fix is Kasna. So our approaching descent point will be based off that. Lock 11 waypoint is two miles before. So platform 2900 stepping down to 1220 at 3.8 miles. And we'll set the missed approach attitude top of the white bar. Uh, climb to 3,700 feet in event for missed approach. Left turn. 015, 015, 3,700. Use LNAV and VNAV. Oh, sorry, we'll use Vorlock and VNAV for the set modes. Visibility requirements uh, 2,200 meters. It's 10k. Superb. Uh, Craig, is there a bug with the glide path? I had issues at Melbourne yesterday. Uh, there is hearing Ken. The coding is wrong in Navigraph. There's no ILS available in the FMC, even though there is an ILS here. So that's how we're going to fly the approach. Non precision. Oh, there's also an NDB 364. What's that based off? It's just an NDB there. I don't think it's based off the approach, but we'll tune it. I won't, I, oh, I won't select it though. Cool. So landing on 1 5. Uh, it's a nice long runway, 3,200 metres. We'll take the first convenient left, Bravo 4, Bravo 5, most likely. Taxi on stand. Uh, let's have a look at the landing performance. Uh, 
So 1-5, it's uh, dry, surface wind is 1901, put it 0, temperature 29108. Fuel then, landing with 5.2, we need about 4 something tons to burn, so we've got about 25 minutes extra fuel. 1.1 uh, tons to burn, landing weight is going to be 63.3, it's quite heavy, but below our max landing weight by about 2 tons. 63.3 So flat 30 We use reverse credit on a dry won't make any difference. There we are we'll Go on a break 3 Bravo 4 should work out quite nicely If not we'll take uh, Bravo 5 Flat 30 Order break 3 And secondly tip with this Briefing's complete And we still have 80 miles to the top of the centre Yeah, that night lighting looks really good with the moon illuminating the uh, the clouds there. Slightly adjusted. One two zero decimal one five. Quarters twenty six zero two five. Centre hello, it's uh, sorry. Centre hello, it's quarters twenty six zero two. Flight level three five zero on an assigned heading of zero eight zero degrees. Quarters twenty six zero two. Centre eight. Start clearance available. Uh, ready to copy. Quarters twenty six zero two. Twenty six zero two. Cleared. Cody eight alpha arrival. Stand up. Transition. Runway one five. Flight level three five zero. Maintain present heading. Maintain present heading. It will be the codec eight alpha and dot transition. Maintain level 350 and present heading, uh, Qantas 2602. Qantas 450, descend flight level ah, 2. Very different in, in Australia, but I was pre warned of this. So, codec 8 alpha, and it was an undod transition. Or was it a pudding? What did he say? And dot, undod. I said and dot. So keep the routing in the FMC. Actually, you know what? I'll leave Andy. I'll update that there. And then I'm just going to go to uh, Andop afterwards. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to route direct to Andop now. Execute. So on the heading, and when and when he's ready, he'll clear us direct to Andop. Perfect. So that's that sorted. It's the same arrival, uh, pretty much. Just a different uh, transition point. So we were briefing, oh, sorry, we were routing via Punit, we're now going in via Andom. Not see any difference. Why Cliff says, I never seem to get weather depicted as well as yours. Um, or is this possibly in range thing? The greater you have the range set, the better for depiction. Is that the weather radar? Yeah, th this weather radar looks rubbish. <laughs> um, if, if you're wondering, that is not realistic at all. I mean, that's more realistic. Contact can approach 118 decimal four. Yeah. A different alpaca pulsar. Approach 118 There was another Qantas. Was that a different alp? Someone's got a 2602 pulsar. Maybe he's doing what I'm doing, thinking of the date month. Uh, it was slightly broken up, I think I've got 200 at the same 350. Quantum 33. Quantum 33, that was all correct. Quantum 33. Not long till top of descent. I think we're all getting on 
Sat down for two and a half hours. Right. And the watch is moaning at me, saying, "Stand up." <laughs> yes, Jim. The milk run isn't that some sort of old sort of something they used to do in these sort of flights, isn't it? Transport milk. I've, someone did tell me once, but it's, uh, I can't exactly remember the, the reference to the name. Oh, Steve, actually, did David mention it? Should be there is another flight with number 2602 inbound to Cairn from the south. Yeah, I heard... Uh, I missed that from David. Yeah, we've already heard, the, heard his call sign. Cadet, do you ever plan on doing a helicopter stream? We've done a couple, and we did enjoy them. Uh, well, I did enjoy doing them, but we can fly another one. I, I, do I have a playlist for helicopters? I think I made one. Let me have a look here. I've only done two streams in helicopters, but I don't have a playlist for it. Or do I? Yeah, last helicopter streams nine months ago in the high performance group. Ebus. That was in my kind of real 737 pilot fly A playlist. I might make a helicopter playlist if I do another stream one. There's the stream anyway, which interested uh, cadet to be the David said the milk run is between Sydney and Melbourne every Monday except the last Monday of each month. Ah, and in that case they do a different routing. But what's the... why? what is the name for the milk run? Why is it called the milk run? The EC-135 and explain. I've been told in real life, Hems pilot. It's very good. But it isn't setting up uh, helicopters in explain quite tricky though. Quite tricky to do. Until top descent, even if we stay on this heading. I don't know what the star. Yeah, you know, never seen that. Level, I've seen that sometimes. Level level oh, it's not too difficult then. Okay. I'll, I'll look back into it. Quadrus eight thirty-three. Descent flight level two one zero. Descent flight level two one zero. Quadrus eight thirty-three. good. Yeah, I think it was the right decision switching to uh, live time. Uh, lighting at the departure was tr truly awful. A little bit of headwind, but uh, barely any wind here. Flashberry says, hey, hello. Edo, you're trying, you're tempted to try the Hellion X-Plane. Uh, is a hotel enough or do I need something else? Uh, 
I don't know. Yeah, you need a fancy joystick. Uh, ever considered reconsidered trying DCS? I I played it a bit last week, Greg, but I don't have the joystick. But just I just wasn't getting on with it. I just set up and trying to manipulate switches, and I just gave up. It's very. Um, I think for the first time you use it for DCS, it's quite overwhelming, especially when when you're trying to use x -Plane Microsoft Flight Sim two different sims already to then learn another sim and one that's very different uh, takes takes some getting used to. Uh, Magus, yeah, I know, the 7-4, they do come, sometimes carry a spare engine under the wheel, and I've got the approval for that, but uh, no, 7-3, I don't think you'd have the ability to carry a spare engine. Yeah, so I think I need to get a HOTUS joystick. I'm thinking of upgrading my joystick anyway. I've got the Airbus side stick, but the throttle doesn't work on it. But a HOTUS stick could be quite flexible even in air, even when flying commercial aircraft. Yeah, Cody 8 after arrival, and Bertram shouldn't expect you on my 1-5 once again, and maintaining pilot 370. Hello, Mr. CO Sone, CS1. Okay, well. Still on that vector. We'll soon be a beam out top of the set point. Six miles. If I update it, though, that might generate my new top of the set point. There we go. Sign yesterday. Was it my call sign yesterday? 260, Mike. Can't remember. Sounds familiar. Can't remember. So, again, we'll just keep on this vector. I think this is some sort of delayed vector. Now, of course, I need to say it's an Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. He's now using, say, 2 6 Sierra Mike. That's why I sent it to the Earth Pillar. Uh, Mr. C. Sone said regarding DCS controls, the initial set of each aircraft is quite the effort. Check out Chuck's guide for which access buttons you need to have mapped and a lot of other useful information. Yeah, that's what's quite daunting, you know, it, and the, it's not very user friendly, I found the menu. But I need a, I think I need a HOTAS stick, don't I really? And, and that's the thing, every aircraft requires you to set it up differently. I mean, where do I even start? I, I actually do have the. Is it Flaming Cliffs? add-on and they've updated that recently with new textures and they're quite of like an entry level aren't they they're, they're not as detailed as the, Sorry, as the other ones so we're just waiting for our descent clearance again we start descending very we can start doing a shallow descent but we're still sort of heading away from the airport he's just venturing us towards him when he's ready sort of slowly going into the airport but That aircraft ahead. Corners 2602, descent flight level 250. Set flight level 250, corners 2602. So 250 set, and we'll go VNAV. It's got to path. It should go to VNAV speed. Uh, why 
have we gone to path? I definitely have common v-nav engaged. So I checked that this morning. Yep, v-nav installed common. Riding 210 degrees, Qantas 2602. That is a massive change by ATC. That's a turn of almost 180 degrees away from the airport. Not very realistic. Let's see what goes on. A very shallow descent. Yeah, that, that should have gone to VNAV speed, being high on profile. That was a bit of a weird one. So, seeing this heading is actually taking us away from the airport, we almost want to level off. There's no point getting any lower. There's no point descending flying away from an airport. So, I'll just do 200 feet per minute. Changes to indicated. And again, if you're flying away from the airport, slow down. There's no point going fast away from the airport. That's a, that's a really... Ten degrees angular bank really increases the arc, but when you're high here, you don't want to bank over that really. Yeah, you're probably right, Jay, and, and lack of exposure to it, because the explain one is also, if you're new to it, quite overwhelming. R22 and x -plane. It's pretty good, isn't it? I've actually remember having my flying list in an R22. So you see, yeah, you don't want to go too slow here, and you don't want to increase your angle of bank much beyond 10 degrees in heading select because of the risk of um, hitting your manoeuvre margins. The angle of attack at which stick shake occurs is significantly lower at this altitude as well. So we'll soon be going away from the airport. So that's quite unusual vectors, but we've got a plan. It's lining you up. Alpha arrival and up transition runway 15. Current heading, level 30. Let's see. Turn left heading 120. Left heading 120 degrees. Hold back at 260, mate. Let's do a fast paper minute there. We'll update the FMC. Quadrus 2602, descend to flight level 210. So far, level 210, Qantas 2602. So that's now set. Now, if we sort of do the routing a bit more, I just I don't want to start descending really quickly if we're flying away from the airport. This is Bazette Basin, also going to Adnop and then left. Let's see what happens. So we are, obviously, if we were to go direct to Adnop, we are a bit high now. Now, what we'll do is if we are going to get a turn left again, we'll go back to 270 knots level change. Did you bring extra vats in fuel? I did today, Ruben. <laughs> 25 degrees. Down we'll go. 
Uh, that's the rate of sense increasing, that's quite normal in level change, booking 70 miles if we follow the line. We're at 26,000. So, this is where I sometimes see differences with, I know in level change now, but when you're flying at 270 knots idle thrust, you get about 2,350 feet per minute, 2, two to 2,300, so that's quite accurate. When you're in VNAV in the PMDG doing the same target speed, you get about 1800 feet per minute. I just don't think that VNAV, the VNAV path doesn't work without your distance cross checks in the BMG. It's a bit funky. I don't want to say give an extra bait to track miles. Ah, oh, this is, they won't give you a straight track miles on a frequency like this. This is an honorary controller. Approach will. It's uh, likely to get slotted in very soon. So easy to say, I'll pack it, you see, maybe with my operator. Uh, okay, director, and DOP to an altitude 7000 feet, QH1009 at quad 2602. So, L now available. 7000. Quad 2602, maintain speed 250 knots. 250 knots, quad 2602. So, 7000 feet set. QNH1009, I think. I nearly did it again, Sam. Yes, it wasn't that long ago we did it. And now we're a little bit low on profile, which is fine. We'll go VNAV, speed, intervent, VNAV path. That's fine, that's good. Passing 20,000 to 7,000 feet, no flag. Flags, and QNH1009 is set. Just uh, 936 for sequencing, turn right heading 060. Perfect, so I'm just going to go to VS now. I'll update our target speed to 250 knots. Good. Velocity 818 for your plan. And at VNAV. And it's planning 250 knots now. Good. What's that noise the controller's having? You see it's warm though, 20,000 feet, to total air temperature 6 degrees. That looks fantastic there. Uh, 118 decimal 4, thanks to the ATC, Qantas 2602, bye! Awesome. So, seatbelt signs are on. Oops. Can's approach. Can's approach, hello, Qantas 2602, descending altitude 7000 feet, 1009 at inbound to and up speed 250 knots. Qantas 
Via the uh, arrival, so 6,000 feet, uh, QNH uh, 1009, 6,000, uh, Qantas 2602. I think I've repeated myself, but I was distracted by the, the TA. So, TA, traffic climbing, yeah, to be fair, that's quite an accurate TA. There he is. Perfect, so on the arrival, and Dr. Cody, expect ILS, so we plan for the localizer, we'll see if we can arm approach, if it's an external ILS we should get glide slope, if there's some weird bug of the sim and navigraph, go glide path. 10 degrees, we're in cloud, we don't need engine engine, actually 10 we would. 11 degrees, engine engine, let's just hope the X-Plane doesn't do anything funky with the... Uh, Icing, there should be no icing at that temperature. See, it. I swear there was an update and the clouds were being illuminated whilst in cloud. I don't seem to be doing it anymore. Hello, Bordergram, hope you're doing well. Adam Wallace, you made a typo. Uh, Steve M, yeah, the progress of The Simpsons is phenomenal. I mean, when I started streaming and recording videos seven years ago, look at the quality of FSX and now what we have. See what happens. Uh, we should be able to LNAV nav the whole way in. Holding the speed very nicely, looking good. The mods behave very well today. Board diagram, you could hear the rain, yes. Seems some stop now. I think on the well I turned the weather radar off, remember, because it was showing weird info. Just on line at 23, maintain speed 200 knots or greater until 10 miles. Contact the tower 120, correction 124 decimal 9. Cool. 200 greater until 10 miles. Sort of terrain below us as well. Can't see. Can't see any of it. Michelangelo, I think they illuminate if you enable volumetric lighting and RXP enhancer, but it's a bit broken and very heavy on the GPU. I won't, I won't change anything just now, since we're all running smoothly. Yeah, it looks good, the update cadet for the two. I think it's going to mostly fix graphical issues, which is what, what the sim needs. Adam Wallace, do you like to set PA on the ACP? I think I'd like it so I know the cabin crew recognise the queue. Just start securing as we do a PA street. Wait, after the queue. So yeah, we don't use this to talk to the passengers. We use the hand mic, which is located on the rear of the pedestal just here. The reason is you will forget, and then you'll try to talk to AC and end up talking to the passengers. So we only use that in really if the hand mic's inoperative or in a rapid depressurization, because we can't use the hand mic then because we've got the oxygen mask on. Good question. Static. And it seems to be sequencing well. We had a bit of a delayed vector inbound, but it's looking good here. Well, Hedges, uh, have you ever broadcast to the wrong people? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, all nice and quiet on the frequency. We're going straight into Cody on path on profile. 37 miles to run, so 10,500 plus a bit, plus slowing down. We're looking good. Oh yes, that's reset because I uh, reset um, Flyer Lua, didn't we? Descent checklist. Pressurisation. 
set anti-ice off. Approach briefing and fuel. We've discussed. Discussed. IAS and alt bugs. Checked, that's it. Descent checklist complete. There's can on the horizon. Let's do the uh, post cruise checks now. So fuel, four pumps, lights. A logo we can turn on in the angle bank. 25 degrees, pressurization, 3.2 set. Verify seatbelts are on recall. Checks complete. CPLC VSD on for Jim. Right, let's wait for the IDENTS for the ILS. Can't wait to see you scrape an engine when the new version comes out. Oh yeah, I did see sparks are available, pod strikes, that's quite cool. So with tail strikes as well. Adam Wallace, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all done that. I've also told uh, at the end of a fight, Cameron crew, uh, arm slides, and I meant disarm. So you're all human, you just gotta realise your mistake. Go, oops, sorry. What's this point here? Delta? It's not some weird coding issue, is it? No, I think that could be that's based off the missed approach. So approaching Cody. Don't think we've been cleared approach. Afterwards, Cody, the minimum descent altitude on this leg is uh, 5,900, so we can't really set this below 6,000 until after Cody. But then we can step down to Gunray 5,000. Well done, David. Uh, minus 278, very nice. Oops, the waterfall's disconnected. Or scan your FMAs frequently. Okay, approach Vox City A18 with you, uh, descending through 11,500 for 7,000. So, Cody, Velocity A18. no holding, so we can continue to gun row. Gun row is the final approach fix, so if we've not been cleared after gun row, we're going to hold. Approach 15, Velocity A18. Quadros 2602, descend via star 5000, cleared ILS approach, runway 15, report established. Set altitude 5000 feet uh, after Cody, cleared ILS uh, approach, after gun row, call established, Quadros 2602. Perfect, so we've got the glide path there. Now, David, you're telling me that approach might not work. So we'll have to arm vol lock initially. I've got MPS scales on here. So MPS scales will appear for you now. now we go. If I switch to level change, you'll get the. Uh, Oh no, you still get the MPS scales, I can't actually remember which mode exactly gets the full glide slope scale. We'll stay in VNAV though, because it's doing a good job. 5,000 feet, we have to maintain from gun row here, so I'm just going to go VS 500, 20, 40, 60, yeah, a little bit long profile. So Vorlock is armed, localizer alive, localizer capture, we'll arm approach. Yeah, GS is there, so that's what I was trying to explain to you David, I don't know if you're still watching the stream. The glide slope, it might not be coded in the FMC, but as long as the ILS is there externally, glide slope is nothing to do with the coding in the database. So, runway heading 149 sets. And yeah, we can maintain 5000, which is the restriction of gun rate. And we can start slowing down now as well. Looking good. Spacing looks good, traffic 10 miles, great job by ATC. So we're now going to fly the ILS, just remember we briefed the localizer. Uh, so now we can set we can set 400 feet with approach climb gradient based off 4%, 400 feet. Minimum set, the rest is all the same. Friction's course is minimum. Nice, right, same capture. Missed approach attitude is uh, 3,700 feet. And once you're on the glide slope, get your flaps out because the speed will run away. Okay, speed check flap was a bit late though, that actually. Glide slope capture, you want to be at flat 5 really because you can see, look, even with flap 1. 
barely slowing down. Flat five. Speed checked. Davis said Navigraph said it's an error they can't fix because the missed approach point is before the fresh out. Ah! Okay. Oh, I see, I see, yes. Oh, missed approach point is always by the fresh out. I'm just going to affect the ILS. At free speed, 124.90, quad is 2605. But what I was trying to explain in Discord, Dave, was how glide slope, this is nothing to do. Glide slope is nothing to do with what's in the FMC. I could delete the FMC. I could put an arrival in in London Heathrow. This will still work. Warlock glide slope. It's completely irrelevant to what's in the database. As long as the ILS is there physically. Right. Checking the speed. We'll leave it at flat 5 monitor. It is slowly slowing down. There's no wind. If we want to slow down further, we can use flat 10. Uh, and it's can tower. Can tower, hello. It's quad is 2602 established. Uh, ILS 15, 11 miles. Quad is 2602, can tower, hello. Perfect. So, yeah, we would have done the approach checklist and just holding on the landing checklist as well. All good. Quad is 763, over to departures. Have a good night, see ya. That is the ground online. There is. No, it's time to do everything. Thank you. Apago 260 micro, my 1 5, clear to land. Good spacing, because over 5 miles ahead, so we can configure it 4 miles. And now, Apago 260 micro, expedite vacate. Oh, that's right. Should be fine. So, 8 miles, not slowing down much further, so we'll go flat 10. Minimum approach speed. Yes, uh, I guess he's not used to this sort of amount of traffic. <laughs> Five miles, three and a half is usually sufficient. So we'll go gear down. Uh, flat 15, we're below 200 knots, speed checked. And we'll do the landing checklist to flaps. Landing checklist. Flat 25. Start switches. Continuous. Recall. Not again. Oh, yeah, I had Check. There we go. Speed brake. Up, three Flat back. 30. Landing gear. Down, three greens. Auto brake. Auto brake, three set. Flaps. Flips, 30 set. Green light. Landing lights. On. Landing checklist complete. Good, so my operator, we hold at landing lights until we've got landing clearance. We'll get down flat 30. Gross weight should be around 58, 59% today. Let's see what the order throttle stabilizes at. And Cam Star, velocity 818. Um, um, he said, uh, on a can. Approach for the, uh, can star. Five. Sorry, cans, Matt. I'll do my best. 2818, can <laughs> So the thrust is a. Yeah, to be fair, it hasn't quite stabilised yet. It will stabilise around 58, 57%. So the pitch and power looks very good. Flat 30. There we are. Wait for landing clearance, but disconnecting now. Order throttle. Order pilot. Wait for landing clearance. That traffic crossing up over the airfield ahead, just at the top of my window. One thousand. Checked. There's no wind. These are the days where you slam it down. Aircrafts are vacating ahead. Packet two six zero Mike, going wrong. We vacated on Bravo four. Packet two six zero Mike, thank you for vacating. Do you have a bay preference? Anywhere up the domestic terminal. Packet two six zero Mike. Thank you. Uh, Packet 260, Mike, no worries. Uh, taxi Bravo, uh, Charlie 4 to the base. Yep. Uh, Charlie 4 to the bay. Bye bye, uh, Packet 260, Mike. Flight directors and glide slips are pretty close on, but any deviation is quite a hot spot. Runway 15, clear to land. Runway 15, clear to land. What is 2602? Lights on, cruise seated, clear to land. Check this complete. Pitch power looks good. Two reds, two whites. Slightly left of centre line. Checked. 400. Checked. Minimum. Continue, so watch that rate of descent. 300. Oh, when it's still, it, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> you make lots of smooth inputs. A little bit right of centre line. A bit fast. 100. Great tonight. 40, 30, Check. 20, Close. 10. Hold the attitude. Well, I'm firm. Oh, minus 200, not that bad. Speed brakes up. 
reverses. It's very sensitive a pitch to the mod now. Knots. Manual braking. Take the next exit. Eighty knots. And go to idle reverse. There we go. Can you just speed up a bit, please? Approach. He's trying to fit in a crop behind you, please. Definitely. Roger, we'll increase speed to one. That's fine. And sixty knots, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kurtz. 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 Well, that maybe one eight zero to six miles, which is what you were given originally. Uh, we'll maintain 180 knots, um, probably till 5 DME if that's okay. Yeah, 48, 18, that's fine. Just approaching, trying to hit aircraft in behind you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cairns. 23602, welcome to Cairns. Taxi, Bravo to the Bay, your preference. See ya. Uh, Bravo to the Bay, uh, Qantas 2602. Thank you very much, ATC, sir. Bye. See ya, thanks for visiting Australia. Uh, easiest just to say cans, thank you. Yeah, the landing was good. It was actually, I thought it looked a lot firmer with the head shake, but minus 200, checked at 20 feet as we do on the line. Uh, it looks like you're going to land very hard, but, you know, we always want to land nicely on the aiming point. Uh, and when I butter it, I just, uh, it's just perfect. But uh, I, I can't butter anymore in this sim. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, great front approach. Nice to do another VATSIM event in... Uh, in Australia, it's been a long time since we've we've done one. And great, I can't get lost if he says park the bay. <laughs> I can do what I like. So we'll taxi straight ahead, and we'll take any stand on the domestic terminal. We'll take the first right uh, here, and uh, yeah, we'll park next to some Qantas traffic friends. We'll see 818, runway 15, please land. 15, please land. Flaps up. Do the rest of the uh, clean up now. Right, transponders out off already. Trim reset. Hold brake to off. Flight director's off. 3100. Speed here. Taxi lights on. Land lights off. Oops, logo. Just keep on for now. Lights to steady. Probe is off. There we are. Just the start switch as well. And we'll crank up the APU. Turned a bit early then. Did I start the APU? I can't get the switch. There we are. Yeah, stock scenery looks nice. Do you set 2000 on the transponder reaching stand? Yes. Don't do it just yet. Cairns Tower, very good evening. Qantas 6729 less, 13 miles. Ah, oh, look, should I squeeze in here? Mass caution elect associated with the radar off thanks. Ah, David, that's you on the right. Wonderful. There we go. Perfect. Right, parking brake set. Safety is available. Bus. Two blues, reds, engines dead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cairns. I don't even know what the local time is here. It's 11.42 Zulu in the morning. It's what? 7, 10, 7 8? Oh, I can't even know. I, can't, I don't know what the time zone is here. Uh, but it's nice evening flight uh, in the end of the day. Oh, look. Have these been out for the entire sector? <laughs> I hope not. The SDS have just popped out. There we go. Uh, let's actually look. I don't often check my landing performance on. How do I check my landing score? Oh, it won't let me retract that. Hopefully that won't affect us on the replay. I need to end the flight though on here, don't I? Oh, how do I use this? Ah, gr great! Why not full uh, excellent approach? But why did I only get four stars? Approach, wait, where's my landing rating? Well, look, it, it doesn't look, look, it's hiding the fact. 2142 local, thanks guys. Yes, well, five stars. Um, it's hiding the fact that I, I got five stars. Um, very good, yeah, enjoyable. Enjoyable sector. Nice to fly a different airline as well, just turn off the beacon. And I'll read some of the comments before we do the replay. Um, what else did people have to say? There we go. Yeah, it's cool livery, isn't it? I think it's automatically started the... Uh, 
disembarkation process. Um, excellent. Uh, I went to uh, Cannes when I was like six or four. I can't remember too much of it. First time I've been here virtually. Tom hates Cannes. Uh, Michael says, welcome to my home state. Very good. I hope you're not in trouble from your other half. Uh, you're about 1,500 kilometers south. Uh, Matt Orbach says, fantastic, great barrier reef add-on for Microsoft Flight Sim. I can highly recommend flights from Hamilton Island in a water plane. Makes a great scenery. Very cool. Uh, Craig Maddox, I use your voice for checklist and PA. Obsessed much? Oh, my God. Oh, God. Um, I would hate to hear my own voice in the checklist. I remember doing the better pushback once uh, recordings, and I heard my own self, self pushing myself back, and I was like, you prat. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Michael Calder, thank you very much for your donation again. That's the second time you donated today. I appreciate your generosity. Um, it sometimes takes a second or two to ping up, but uh, I'll let it uh, run through uh, and, and do its thing. Uh, Davish Wash here, thank you. If the stairs are out, you can only do step, step climbs and ascents. Oh my days. Oh. <laughs> joke, joke of the stream. Ugh. <laughs> excessive uh, thank you so much uh who chum oof the 101 speed isn't doing my ocd any good oh dear uh, happy <laughs> there we go uh brilliant uh steve m says i can imagine you saying 50, that's uh when you 40, heard it back to yes 30, i can't even said that on the stream 10. thanks again michael appreciate it Ma ah it welcome to QLD. <laughs> home I'd... of the Burgens and Milton Mangoes. I don't know who they are, but I'm sure it's their home. And uh, mate, I think sounded like Marmite. Uh, other uh, yeast-based spreads are available. Thank you very much for your generosity, Michael. Uh, again, thank you indeed. Swifty says, uh, great stream capture. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a nice chill stream. No big issues. Super mod handled well. A few little things with common vena. I'm not kicking in correctly, but pitch power worked well handled nicely it seems to be working great in x -Plane 12 let's just wait for x -Plane 12.1 to fix these awful cockpit lighting it is oh it was unusable we had to switch to live time to go tonight uh, daytime there it was midday sun was at the height of the sky and it was pitch black in the cockpit it, it is completely broken at the moment so anyway let's uh, call it a day that's two streams i've done in the space of 12 hours and uh, poor jack's looking at me saying come on daddy let's go <laughs> <laughs> Go for a walk. Right, we've we'll logged off of that soon. We'll turn that down here. And uh, turn. Oh, we didn't use um, the new Sky app today because we flew Qantas. Turn off the overlay and uh, cue the funky replay music. You're blind. That is very loud. Oh gosh, the volume is very late to update as well. It's a bit laggy. Right, let's. Uh, See if this works. Yeah, it was close to being firm at one point, but it was sort of what we want to look for. The Boeing landing. Every day like that for the rest of my career, I'll be happy. Very safe. Right on the aim point. Timed that perfectly. <laughs> Wasted runway there? No, that's what we want to do on a very short runway. Maybe a tad firm, but not all good. It won't fix the cockpit with the new update. Oh, really, Greg Scott? Uh, hopefully there'll be some improvements, but yeah, it was, that was bad. Is it the same in other aircraft in, in, in the moment? Because last year's streams were done at night time. Still one from the tower. Oops, I don't think we're actually going to see the touchdown. Uh, maybe just. Bye-bye. Great to see you back at the colonies, very good. Uh, return sector, you need to be streaming much the, the, more than the last 24 hours. Uh, no, Pete. 
right anyway, I'll pop you in the wing for you guys. further back. There's lots of red. I don't like this red light on the wingtips, both sides. There we go. Perfect. Right, guys. Well, once again, thank you very much for popping into another Flying Nixon live stream. Great to see some uh, unfamiliar faces here. People who can't often watch live, just the part of the world they're in. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it here. It's uh, almost midday here in the UK, so I'll uh, get myself a spot of lunch to take Jack for a walk as well. Thank you very much to everyone that donated for your generosity, and uh, to all the members for your continued support as well. And if you enjoy the stream as a regular subscriber, appreciate the thumbs up. And if you are new, just watching. Uh, browsing, maybe consider subscribing as well to keep up to date with the latest content. But thank you very much indeed, and we'll be live again very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.